Good evening, everybody. We'll open up the meeting with a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Move approval of the recommend, Mr. President. The motion made by Council Gould. All in favor? Any opposed to vote? Uh, we're going to get right into uh, hearings 4A and just going to explain to you procedurally how we're going to do this because we do have some guests in the audience. So I just want to explain it. What we'll do is uh, City Clerk Spanos will read the zoning amendment. After he reads the zoning amendment, at that point, uh, the mayor will come up and make his presentation. At that point, I will then open the, the meeting up for public uh, comments. I'll ask anyone, anyone in favor, then anyone in opposition, if you'd like to speak, I ask you to come up to the mic, state your name, address for the record. I would just ask that if your point has been made a couple of times, I understand that we, we understood it from the previous speakers, so be respectful of everyone, everyone please. Uh, after that point, what I will then do is I'll then basically turn the meeting over to uh, Mr. Betancourt, the chairman of the planning board. And at that point, I'm going to allow him to basically run the meeting with the planning board members. And then I assume at some point, my fellow colleagues will might want to entertain some questions, ask some questions. But that's basically the general layout of how we're going to run the meeting tonight. Okay? So at this time, uh, City Clerk, please read the zoning amendment. Notice here that given that the Planning Board and City Council, the City PBD will conduct a joint public hearing on Thursday evening, May 25th, 2017 at 7.30 p.m. in the Franklin Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, PBD Mass. In accordance with the, the provisions of Chapter 48, Section 5 of the Massachusetts General Laws to consider amending the zoning ordinance of the City PBD as follows, we had ordained by the, by the City Council of the City Peabody as follows, Section 1, that the Zoning Ordinance of the City Peabody entitled City of Peabody Zoning Ordinance ad adopted April 28, 2011 and amended through December 8, 2016 is hereby further amended as follows by deleting Section 1.7.2 under prohibited uses the following language operating a medical marijuana treatment facility and dispensary to produce such in the city is not an allowed use in, in any zoning district. And, and by adding the following new section 6.13 entitled medical marijuana facilities as follows. 6.13.1 purpose. It is recognized that the nature of the substance cultivated, processed, and or sold by medical marijuana treatment centers and off-site medical marijuana dispensaries may have challenging operational characteristics and should be located in such a way as to ensure the health, safety, and general well-being of the public as well as patients seeking treatment. The specific and separate regulation of registered marijuana dispensaries hereafter referred to as RMD, as medical marijuana treatment centers and off-site medical marijuana dispensary, hereafter referred to as an OMMD facilities is necessary to, uh, to advance these purposes. Subject to the provisions of this ordinance, Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws and 105 CMR 725, dot zero 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 registered marijuana dispensaries and off-site medical marijuana dispensaries will be permitted to provide medical support security and physician oversight that meets state regulations as established by the massachusetts department of public health section uh, 6.13.2 Definitions, registered marijuana dispensary, RMD, a use operated by a, by a not-for-profit entity registered and approved by the Mass Department of Public Health 
in accordance with 105 CMR 725.000 and pursuant to all other applicable state laws and regulations, also to be known as Medical Marijuana Treatment Center that, that acquires, cultivates, possesses, processes, including development of related products such as food, tinctures, aerosols, oils, or ointments, transfers, transports, sells, distributes, dispenses, or administers marijuana, uh, products containing marijuana-related supplies or educational materials to registered qualifying patients or their personal care givers. A RMD shall explicitly include facilities which cultivate and process medical marijuana and which may also dispense and deliver medical marijuana and related products. The cultivating, the cultivation and processing of medical marijuana in accordance with these regulations is considered to be a manufacturing use and not agriculturally exempt from zoning. Off-site medical marijuana dispensary, OMMD, a dispensary that is located off-site from the cultivation slash, slash processing fa facility and controlled and operated by the same registered and approved not-for-profit entity which operates an affiliated RMD, but which serves only to dispense the process marijuana-related supplies and educational materials to registered qualifying patients or their personal care givers in accordance with the provisions of 105 CMR 725.000. 6.13.3, applicability. This section applies to all registered marijuana dispensaries and off-site medical marijuana dispensaries proposed to be constructed under 105 CMR 725.000. 6.13.4 permitted district medical marijuana treatment center slash registered marijuana dispensary and off-site medical marijuana dispensary in BR1 that is sited east of US Route 1 and south of the access ramp from US Route 95 slash Route Route 128 um, dash south to US Route 1 south. 6.13.5 operational re requirements. One, use a RMD and OMMD facilities may only be involved in the uses permitted by its definition and may not include other businesses or services within their designated square footage. B, no marijuana shall be smoked, eaten, or otherwise consumed or ingested within the premises. C, in no event shall an RMD or OMMD facility be open to the public and no sale or other dis distribution of marijuana shall occur upon the premises via delivery from the premises except to an OMMD be between the hours of 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. Two physical requirements. A, all aspects of this use slash facility relative to the, acquis the acquisition, cult uh, cultivation, possession, processing, sales, distribution, dispensing, or administration of marijuana uh, products containing mar marijuana, comma, related supplies, comma, or educational materials must take place at a fixed location within a fully enclosed building. B, no outside storage is permitted. C, no MMD facility shall have a gross floor area in excess of 5,000 square feet. D, ventilation, o, all RMD and OMMD facilities shall be ventilated in such a manner that no um, I, pesticides, insecticides, or other um, chemicals or products used in the, in the cultivation or processing are dispersed into outside atmosphere, and two, no odor or marijuana or its processing can be detected by a person 
with an <laughs> and unimpaired and otherwise normal sense of smell at the, exter at the exterior of the medical marijuana business or at any adjoining use or property. Um, e, signage shall be displayed on the exterior of the RMD and o OMMD facilities ent uh, entrance in, in plain sight of clients stating that registration card issued by the Mass Department of Public Health required in two inches in height, all of the signage shall comply with 105 CMR 725.00 and section 11.7 signs. Take a break, yeah. Three, lo location, an RMD and OMMD facilities shall not be located in buildings that contain any pharmacy, medical doctor offices, or the offices of any other professional practice practitioner authorized to prescribe the use of medical marijuana. B, an RMD or OMMD facility shall not be located in buildings that contain any residential units, including transient housing, such as hotels, motels, and dormitories. Four, issuance slash transfer slash discontinuance of use. A, a special permit shall be valid only for the registered entity to which the approval was issued and only for the site on, on which the RMD and OMMD has been authorized. B, a special permit shall be non-transferable and shall have a term limited to the applicant's ownership or control of the premises as an RMD or OMMD. C, permitted RMD and OMMD Facility shall file, shall file an annual report to the City Council no later than January 31st, pro pro providing a copy of all current applicable state licenses for the, for the facility and or its owners and demonstrating continuous compliance with the conditions of the special permit. D, a special permit shall lapse if the applicant ceases op operation of the RMD or OMMD and or if the applicant's registration by DPH has been revoked, expires, is terminated, is transferred to another controlling entity or is relocated to a new site. Um, subsection I, the applicant shall notify the zoning enforcement officer and city council in, in writing within 48 hours of such lapse, cessation, disc, discontinuance or expiration. E, an RMD or OMMD facility shall be required to remove all material, plants, equipment, and other paraphernalia in compliance with 105 CMR 725.105 sections J and O prior to expiration of his DPH registration or immediately following revocation or voiding of its DPH registration or upon ceasing its operation 6.13.6 application procedure and requirements application requirements this is number one and and an application for special permit shall include the following a the name and address of each owner of the rmd and ommd facility slash op operation b copies of all required registrations licenses and permits issued to the applicant by the commonwealth of massachusetts and any of its agencies for the facility. C, evidence that the applicant has site control and right to use to use the site for an RMD or OMMD facility in the form of a, of a deed or valid purchase and sales agreement or in the case of a lease notarized statement from the property owner and a copy of the lease ag agreement. D, a notarized statement signed by the RMD and OMMD organization's chief executive officer and corporate attorney disclosing all of its design owners, including officers, directors, partners, managers, and other similarly situated individuals and entities and their, their addresses. If any of the above are entities rather than persons, the applicant must disclose the identity of all such responsible individual persons. E, a description of all activities to occur on site, 
including but not limited to um, colon uh, cultivating and processing of marijuana and marijuana infused products, parentheses, MIPs, um, on-site sales, delivery of medical marijuana and related products to OMMDs, off-site direct delivery to patients, distribution of educational materials and other programs or activities. F, a written notice from the, from the Chief of Police shall be submitted to the City Council stating that an acceptable, an acceptable security plan has been reviewed and approved. The security plan shall include the, the location and details of all security measures for the site, including but not limited to lighting, fencing, gates, waste, waste disposal, alarms, and similar measures ensuring the safety of the employees and patrons and to protect the premises from theft or other criminal activity. D, uh, G, D, details of all proposed exterior security measures of, for the RMD and OMMD facility. Two, site plan. The special permit app application shall include a site plan prepared by a, Mass a Massachusetts registered architect, landscaped architect, professional engineer, or other appropriate design professional. The site plan shall include the following com components and information. A, locust plan. A, a locust plan showing the entire proposed development in its, re in its relation to existing areas, buildings, and roads for a distance of 300 feet from the boundaries of the proposed development or such distance as may be approved or required by the City Council. The plan shall also show all contiguous land owned by the applicant or by the owner of the property which is subject, which is the subject of the application. B, improvements plan, a, a plan depicting all existing and proposed buildings, driveways or roads, parking areas, service areas, refuse collection areas, sidewalks, paths, land, landscaping, etc. Building plan, a detailed floor plan showing square footages for each use within the RMD and OMMD. D, details, de detail sheets included, including but not limited to um, pavement markings, lighting fixtures, fencing, dumpster and, and closures, signage, um, which is temporary or permanent, and any site improvements included in plans A-C above. Three, review procedure. Upon receipt of the application, the city clerk shall forward a copy for review and comment to the building department, fire department, police department, public services department, board of health, planning board, and conservation commission if applicable. The department shall review the application and provide comments back to the city council within 21 calendar days. Four, applicant must also apply to the planning board pursuant to section 12 site plan review of this ordinance um, and and comply with said section and section 13 development impact review. 6.13.71, in addition to the standard findings for a special permit under section four and general laws chapter 48, section nine, the city council must also find all of the following. A, that the RMD or OMMD facility is designed to minimize any adverse impacts on abutters and other parties in interest. B, that the RMD or OMMD facility demonstrates that it will meet all of the permitting requirements of all applicable agencies within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and will be in compliance with all applicable state laws and regulations. C, that, that the applicant has satisfied all of the conditions and requirements of this section and other applicable sections of this ordinance. D, that the RMD or OMMD project meets a demonstrated need. E, that the RMD or OMMD facility provides adequate security measures to, in, 
to ensure that no individual participant will pose a direct threat to the health or safety of other individuals and that the storage and or location of cultivation is adequately secured. F that the RMD or OMMD facility adequately, adequately addresses issues of traffic demand, cir circulation flow parking and queuing, um, particularly at peak periods at the facility and its impact on neighboring uses. 6.13.8, enforcement, any violation of this section shall be enforced in accordance with, in accordance with sections 15.1 of the zoning ordinance. Section two, all ordinances, the parts of ordinances in, inconsistent here with the hereby repealed. Section three, this ordinance shall take effect as provided by, by law, PBD, City Council, Councilor Joel D. Sasla, City Council, President, PBD, Planning Board, Thomas Betancourt, Chairman. Thank you, I, will, I do want to applaud, I felt <laughs> the same way. <laughs> Uh, before I go to the mayor, I just have to, one piece of housekeeping. Um, this meeting is being televised live on cable channel 9 and being taped by PBD Access TV and also being recorded by a city council stenographer. Um, at this point, uh, Mr. Mayor Bentoncourt. Thank you. Uh, good evening, council members, and good evening, planning board members. Uh, thank you for being here today, um, particularly the planning board. Uh, this is a topic that we as a city council the city have been dealing with now for probably the better part of a year and uh, we've had meetings in the past so some of it will be repetitive to them but I'm going to try to give an overview of, of what we've worked on uh, some of the action and steps we've taken and uh, certainly I'll be here to do the best I can to answer all questions that you may have um, as I present my proposal to you um, last November voters of Massachusetts approved question four legalizing recreational marijuana. I strongly believe, um, strongly against question four, strongly advocated uh, for the defeat, and in here in, in, here in Peabody, uh, the, the question four was voted down by several few thousand votes. Uh, that result in Peabody combined with my grave concerns over how this is going to be enforced what types of steps are going to be put in place for the protection and safeguard, safeguarding our children, uh, uncertainty as to how potential abuses will be curbed, just in general about the many legal questions that are sure to arise uh, over the next few years. And certainly I think we've seen uh, there's a great deal of uncertainty, some confusion, great deal of speculation that is taking place right now as to how medical marijuana, recreational marijuana is going to be handled. Uh, and I think that over the course of the next few years, we'll still be learning more uh, as laws are made, changes are made to those laws, I think this is going to be something that cities and towns will be dealing with for some years to come. Um, I took a strong stance and uh, wanted to be very vocal in my opposition. However, in terms of medical marijuana, I've done a great deal of research, learned a lot, been educated, and medical marijuana to me has helped a great number of people in the city provide relief, provide treatment, and, and that's something that I've taken a completely different view of. Um, and I'll speak to that as we move along. Uh, recreational marijuana, to me, is a gateway drug, and it is something that I have grave concerns about moving forward. I was recently asked, as a couple weeks ago, uh, to serve on a, pet, a panel, a state panel, with the MMA, uh, Massachusetts Mayors and Municipal Association. Uh, I served on a panel with mayors from Lemonster and West Springfield, uh, along with the Attorney General's Office, the Chief uh, Division Chief, Margaret Hurley, uh, who's been working with a number of cities and towns whose name is often on the reports and, uh, and decisions that are made from the Attorney General's office um, regarding the different issues that are arising. Um, during that panel discussion, I learned a great deal about what other cities and towns are doing, uh, what the recommendations were for the Attorney General's office, and her recommendations uh, were in the Beacon, which is the publication that's given out by the MMA. Um, Margaret Hurley, the attorney, um, her belief was that cities and towns should be proactive. Nobody knows this city, nobody knows their town uh, like the elected officials. Uh, I think we have an excellent handle on what Peabody wants, what Peabody deserves, and clearly the intent of the voters was very strong as to their feelings about marijuana in the city. Uh, her feelings were to be proactive, 
Try to assert lo local control over your city and, uh, and make the best decisions you can uh, for what you think is acceptable for your individual communities. We in Peabody, I think, have done an outstanding job trying to uh, protect our citizens and adhere to their wishes. Uh, first, we um, decided, as actually at a meeting or two ago, City Council unanimously voted to have a moratorium on recreational marijuana until December of 2018. Uh, that'll certainly give us time to learn a little bit more about uh, what the uh, laws and ordinances are gonna be. Uh, there is a Cannabis Control Commission that's under the Office of the State Treasurer. They have until July 1st, 2018 to come up with their um, recommendations uh, for, for an action of laws. Uh, that's some time away. They're gonna be a great deal of work is going to be taking place. The moratorium, all of us, city council, and I don't wanna speak for everybody, but I think the tone of the meeting was that we wanted to uh, push off recreational marijuana as far as we could, which December of 2018, um, we felt based on attorney general's opinions that that was appropriate. So we've pushed off recreational marijuana to December of 2018. The sec second action we took, uh, we took some time ago, uh, based on the results of the election here in the city of Peabody, we have voted, uh, we have put forward to a referendum vote at the next election, this coming November, a vote for the city whether or not we would want to have recreational marijuana in our community. That'll be a vote that's taken this November. Very proud of that. I think the city, Peabody, its citizens, its residents should decide what type of city that we would like to be and whether or not recreational marijuana is something as a community we would like to move forward with. And now, today is the third action that I wanted to bring forward. The next step, and I'd be asking for your support. It is to pro a proposed zone change to create a medical marijuana zone. The zone I propose is outlined in section 6.13.4, and I will not ask Tim, Mr. Spanos, our city clerk, to read that again. Um, but I will read the one sentence. 6.13.4, permitted district. Medical marijuana treatment center slash registered marijuana dispensary and off-site medical marijuana dispensary. It will be in the BR, BR1 that is sited east of US Route 1 and south of the access ramp from US Route 95 slash Route 128 south to US Route 1 south. I am, with uh, your permission, Mr. President and Mr. Betancourt, Planning Board Chair, I'd like to give out the maps, which I think can better explain and give a better visual. Motion received. These are maps 78, 88, and 97 of the Peabody Zoning Book. A motion received, please. Thank you. So there should be, the maps that you're looking at, there should be three maps. 78 would be up top, 88 underneath that, and then 97 underneath that. 78 up above, 88 underneath that, 
98 underneath that. I mean, 97 underneath that. The parcels in question that I'm going to be discussing are primarily on number 88 and map 97. Map 78 is above that going further down, further north on Route 1. So previously, the language that was proposed basically ran from the bottom of page 88, or the very top of 97, up to the top of map 88. And to, just to give you some perspective, that's from Holiday Inn up until Dawn's Hardware. However, today, I'm, pro I'm proposing con for consideration to the Planning Board and the City Council an amendment to exclude some parcels from, some parcels from my original proposal. And here's why. Um, upon learning and hearing of concerns from a number of Linfield residents, uh, Linfield elected officials, who I received nothing but uh, courteous and um, uh, outstanding uh, discussions and I was treated very courteously but their concerns were expressed to me about access to the office park that is only accessible through Green Street. Green Street is connected to uh, Route 1 prior to going north before you hit Holiday Inn. Um, I drove over to the site, uh, talked with a number of the neighbors, elected officials, and they were absolutely right. Um, I, I was immediately sympathetic to their concerns uh, about having access go through their neighborhood to go over to that specific office park. That office park is owned by Hecht Development. And immediately I began to speak to our city solicitor, Mike Smazinski, who is here, uh, to look at our options as a city to try to accommodate. Certainly, my intention was to create a zone that limited the places where it could go in our city. I did not want it near neighborhoods. I did not want it near schools or parks. And I certainly, the last thing I wanted to do was create, by our vote, something that would affect uh, our neighbors at the town of Linfield. And upon hearing from the families, their concerns, I thought the appropriate action was to make an amendment, or to ask for consideration for an amendment, to reduce the size of the zone. And what I'm proposing is to amend, or proposing for consideration, is to amend the zoning ordinance of the language I read earlier, 6.13.4, to accept out, take out, and I'm going to just list this by the map, assessors, assessors map 008, parcels 008C, which is owned by Heck Development, 008X, which is the property of Holiday Inn, 009, which is a small pizza pie-shaped property that is owned by the city of Peabody, and 010, which is also owned by Heck Development. Those parcels are accessible. Those office parks are only accessible through Green Street. I would be proposing for consideration this amendment to take away and remove those sites from our medical marijuana zone. I'll give everybody a minute to, to look at the map. Point them up. On map 88, it's the bottom half of 88. There are four parcels. A point of clarification, I believe one of the properties is on map 97, which is 008C, if you're having a hard time finding it. Yep. Three are on page 88, one is on page 97. So there are four parcels there, three that are primarily on the bottom half of map 88, and one begins on the bottom of 88, and then is primarily in, at the top of map 97. I would be promote, proposing to, for consideration, to remove 
those four parcels from the zone that we would be looking to create. What would be left for the proposal would be five and a half acres, four parcels. Again, to give you some perspective, it would be Bertucci's, Brothers Cocina, Don's Hardware, and then a couple of acres behind. You can see that on the, the top half of map 88. You can see those parcels. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, if there's no objection, I'd like to present the language of the um, proposed for consideration amendment language. Motion we'll receive. And it's all. So in talking to a, a number of councillors and, and, and others, other interested parties, uh, the issue of spot zoning has come up. I want to state very clearly and strongly that there is no issue of spot zoning with the action that I'd be proposing be taken today. Spot zoning is when a mun municipality singles out a parcel of land for different zoning treatment than neighboring parcels, all for the economic benefit of that one landowner whose parcel is being singled out. There is no con conflict here with the adjoining par parcels. There is nothing being done for the economic benefit of any one particular landowner. This is a zone uh, creating a number of parcels. Uh, there's no special treatment being given to any single parcel uh, taking place here. Uh, this is a, a plan that the city has proposed an overall city plan to create a medical marijuana zone. There is no property being singled out for special treatment. Um, spot zoning is not an issue for, that I believe is going to be a problem for us with this particular uh, proposal. Also, this action does not interfere in any way with the two actions that we as a city have taken previously, the moratorium and the referendum vote. Uh, this action that we would take would have no impact or would not interfere in any way with those two actions. In fact, I strongly believe that this action further supports and supplements the work that we've already done. Um, to kind of wrap up, there is no blueprint that the state has for us. There is no blueprint that's been established by any other city, any other community in our state or any other state. This is something new. There's a great deal of work to be done. There's a great deal of speculation as to what is going to take place. There's a great deal of uncertainty. My feeling is that we need to be proactive, take steps that we think are right for our community, knowing the community's needs, knowing what, how the voters voted in this past election, uh, and to take these positive steps. I believe creating a medical marijuana zone accomplishes a number of things. But primarily what it does is it limits where these facilities could go. I think all of you know that there are medical marijuana facilities looking around our city, looking at specific sites in our city, and all of you know it. This, I believe, is the appropriate action because if this type of facility goes into a place that we do not believe is right, near a school, near a park, near a library, near a neighborhood, 
I don't think that would be the appropriate, that was not what we would want for the vision of our city. As we have with other zones that we've created in the past, I believe that putting this in an area where it is not near schools, not near parks, not near neighborhoods, but has plenty of access is the appropriate step to take. Uh, I ask for your support, I ask for your vote, and I'm certainly here to any, answer any questions that you may have, both from planning board members and from city councilors, and our city solicitor, Mike Smazinski, is here as well. Thank you, Mayor Bettencourt. I just need kind of a motion to, to, uh, uh, to accept the amended um, language. Motion to receive comment. and accept the amendment. Thank you. We're gonna make one change. Uh, the planning board normally asks questions, and then they go to the public. So I want to turn it over to Chairman Bettencourt to give the planning board opportunity to ask any questions they may have, and then we're gonna open up the public for public comments. So, uh, Chairman Bettencourt. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, for the record, uh, I would like to move to receive two correspondence. Uh, the first one from the town of Linfield, dated May 22nd, 2017, from Christopher Barrett, chair of the selectmen. Second would be from Representative Bradley H. Jones, Jr., also dated May 22nd, 2017. I would like to entertain uh, any questions from the planning board. Mr. Gagnon. Uh, just a couple of questions. Um, on the uh, site that's proposed, we have Bertucci's and Cozina and then the Dawn's, and then you have the lot in the back. Is uh, I know we're just doing the zoning thing tonight, but is this is that lot in the back? Is that something that could, is going to be considered as far as a, a spot that they could have, um, you know, uh, a site, a marijuana site there, or are you just uh, just going? We're going to do the zoning, and then you know, if one of these three other parcels leave, then that would be available for someone to open up a marijuana uh, distribution center. Yep. Though all four parcels would be eligible for this type of site, uh, yes. Um, and there is, I believe, potential access to the, to the, the back end parcel behind Brothers Casina and Bertucci's. So yes, all four would be uh, eligible for such a use. And that unknown lot that would have to, is that unknown lot and the lot behind, is that owned by the city? Or? No, it's not owned by the city. I don't know the owner. Uh, of that back parcel. Oh, okay. Um, and, but there is a, a stretch you can see on that is unknown as to who owns it. Uh, but none of these parcels are owned by the city of Peabody. Okay. And uh, so this is just a distribution. There's no cultivation going on in this area. No, it would just be distribution centers. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, I'd like to turn it over to uh, people who would like to speak in favor of this um, amendment. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this amendment? Come to the podium, your name, address. I'd like to um, thank the mayor and the city council, the planning board. My name is Chris Barrett, uh, chairman of the board of selectmen Linfield, and uh, we consider PB a good friend to us. And I want to thank uh, the mayor especially for being um, in favor of his amendment. Yes, um, I'd like to thank the mayor for being very proactive to the uh, needs of the residents. Um, we certainly um, applaud him for the proactive approach that he and the leaders of PB have made. Linfield voted strongly against question four. Uh, we put it on the ballot, um, and we also voted at town meeting uh, against marijuana. Um, I agree with the mayor. I'm a vice principal at Everett High School. I hope you don't hold that against me. I know we have a lot of history on the football field in Peabody. Please don't hold that against me. But this certainly is a gateway drug. And as, as a resident of Linfield, I'm in South Linfield, I'm not too far from Green Street. It would greatly uh, negatively impact 
my neighborhood, but also Green Street. A number of uh, my residents, my fellow residents are here, and the families are being impacted. And uh, I know the mayor, I know the city council, a couple of council members have been down there and have seen that impact. So I appreciate um, the pro how proactive you've been with this amendment um, to pull Green Street out of that zone and change. Um, as we've discussed earlier, because this street, Green Street, has also been negatively impacted by the billboards. So there was some positive uh, feedback we got tonight about hopefully a solution uh, for Green Street and that surrounding area in Peabody uh, for that billboard in question. But once again, I just, I know you guys have a busy night, but I want to thank you um, for this amendment. Uh, listening to the needs of Linfield, I know you have a lot of needs in Peabody, but the fact that you guys paused uh, took a moment uh, and to consider the needs of Linfield. Um, it's something we won't forget. And I promise you, as chairman of the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Selectmen itself, we will do anything we can uh, to support you in the future. So thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Please state your name and address for the I'm record, David please. Sweeney at 43 Green Street. Where there's probably some benefit to medical marijuana, is there any reason why there needs to be special distribution for that? I take a private statin. I don't have to go to a special place to get private statin. Why cannot medical marijuana be distributed through a CVS, a pharmacy that's regulated? Why does it have to have a special location for that? Any response? All right. Well, once we answer that, then perhaps we can continue this conversation. Anybody wishing to speak in opposition? I think there's some confusion, and I, and I, and I just want to clarify it. Chairman Bettencourt, when he's asking to speak in favor of the amendment, means that you're in favor of the way it was originally originally proposed. Then, plus, at, plus the amendment. Then it's in opposition. You're saying plus the amendment? Okay, so plus it, and then in opposition. But it's been a little bit confusing. I just. Okay, well, I'm in opposition to how it was originally proposed. I'm Danielle Burdon. I'm a member of uh, the Linfield community. I live on Green Street. I thank the members of the council and for Mayor Bettencourt. I can't be more appreciative that they took into consideration our neighborhood. I know we're not part of the Peabody community, but we are neighbors and it was very neighborly to think about us. Um, so we all depend on a safe, stable environment to raise our families. The original proposed zone would have dramatically and adversely affected the lives and homes of many decent people. Living with the uncertainty of people potentially getting high and driving down our streets impaired while our children play would have been agonizing for the residents of this area. Additionally, this would have negatively affected the value of the homes of these residents of all ages who have worked so hard to afford, maintain, and secure them. I request that the City Council accept the Mayor's recommendations and approve the amendment to remove the parcels that border the Linfield from the zoning proposal. I also want to mention I truly appreciate your support of the City Council, of the Mayor, of Bradley Jones, and of Chris Barrett. Everybody has been so wonderful, and I thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Hearing none, do I have any questions? Yes, sir. Come to the podium, your name, address, please. The name is Russell Donovan, 12 Quail Road. I'm kind of confused of which came first, the chicken or the egg, so let me just speak frankly. Um, we're talking to the planning board right now about the amendment for the zoning change. 
before the amendment for, from the mayor for a zoning change. So I don't know which came first, the first amendment or the second. Is the amendment with the amended language accepted? That's the way uh, it comes. So it's the second included. Okay. Accepted. Thank you. And as the mayor said, it's not spot zoning because he includes several other parcels. Now, anybody who drives Route 1 up to the jug handle knows what traffic we have right now. There are four active businesses on that quadrant, the, I'll call it the Golden Triangle right now, because you got Petrucci's, you got the gas station, you got casinas, and you got Don's equipment, uh, outdoor equipment. When you change the zoning in that area, you're going to make it a Golden Triangle. You're going to make it a spot zoning for that quadrant of land. You're going to upgrade that property value to a pot distribution center. So Batucci's will move, the gas station will close, the restaurant will probably sell uh, brownies, I guess, and Don's equipment will have to find someplace else to go. I'm not opposed to the marijuana center, but as one of the planning board mem members asked about the back lot. As I read the public notice, the original amendment was to rezone just the back lot for spot zoning for a marijuana distribution center. In order to e elude or evade spot zoning, they included the other four parcels. So I'm opposed to the spot zoning of that area because we all know Route 1, we all know the traffic that's involved there. You change that center of location to a di totally different activity, it's not in the betterment of the city of Peabody. It is spot zoning by fact, by multiple properties to elude spot zoning. I'm not in favor of it and I oppose it, and I ask the planning board and the city council to understand what you are doing tonight. Thank you very much. Again, anyone wishing to speak in opposition of the original amendment plus the accepted amendment? No one? else wishing to speak in opposition? Do we have any questions from the City Council? Having none, I close this public hearing. What? It's a planning board hearing. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to, through you to the Mayor, um, one of the planning board members mentioned uh, they asked who owns the property behind those three? And you said you didn't know. Well, somebody, you have to, somebody has to know because they had to been sent a letter telling them that we're going to change the zoning of their land. So who owns the land? Well, Turnpike Realty has to be a person. There's no, there's no individual name of who owns the property. If it's owned by a corporation, there would be a, re a resident agent that would receive any notice. Regarding the okay. property. Because in, in this, all this stuff, whoever opens a clinic that has to be, well, he wouldn't be the owner of the clinic. He'd be selling the land to a clinic. So just to, it would be built there. It's not just being zoned because it's, we're putting it there and maybe one of those three other businesses is going to sell their properties. It would be built there. So just to want to clarify that. Thank you. And, and if I could, uh, I, I, did, I, I think there might have been some confusion by the, the, the last speaker. Uh, there's no multiple amendments. There is language that was proposed. It was clear language as to what the area was that was going to be zoned. I've made one amendment asking that certain parcels be taken out of that zone. Uh, there's no multiple amendments. There's language that was proposed, and there's been now an amendment, one amendment to that language. Uh, I'm not going to respond to the, the, his comments about spot zoning. 
uh, to me that is not even an issue. Um, there is, uh, um, well, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any, any further questions. Any other questions? And oh, one other thing, if I could. Any proposal has to come by, via, via a special permit to the city council. So anything that would be proposed at one of those sites comes back to the city council for discussion, debate, uh, and your due diligence. Question for Mr. Grell. Yeah, <clears throat> I was just curious, uh, who are the other owners there? Are they all different owners? Of the, is each parcel that's there owned by somebody different? They are four uh, separately owned parcels by four different companies. I believe they're all, it's not a single individual, they're all corporations that are, own each of the four, but there's no one corporation that owns multiple spots. Council. Thank you, Chairman. And understand this, when you say it's a special permit, they need to come in front of this, the city council for a, um, uh, for a special permit. And at that time, can um, conditions be set additional to what it is here? That would be up to the council. There will be some regulations coming to us. Any ma medical marijuana facility that opens up has to get approval and certification from the state before they can come forward. So there's a whole a vetting process that any company would have to go through uh, before they got a license to operate. Once that license to operate is obtained, they look for sites. Uh, that work is probably going simultaneously. And then we as a city, if there's going to be potentially one in the city of Peabody, they would have to come to the council for a special permit. And so if any issues came to light from now until then, the council would be able to have the opportunity to set additional uh, considerations or uh, uh, conditions to that operation, such as a, a guard. I know some of the facilities that operate now have a guard at the um, parking lot, and you must present a prescription to uh, enter that particular building. Is that something as a council would be able to set if we're going forward? Yes, and, and, and I think that's something, um, uh, my comfort also with medical marijuana, not only for the, the potential pain relief and treatment uh, that it provides, uh, those that are, uh, are in need of it, uh, but also there's a whole, as I said, vetting process that these corporations, these companies have to go through. And uh, there are hurdles that have to take, there are safeguards in place uh, you cannot just walk in off the street to purchase medical marijuana. You have to, uh, through the help of a doctor, obtain approval from the state, get a card that allows you to go to a medical marijuana facility to obtain um, that, mar that, mar that medical marijuana. Uh, and I know some of these facilities do have um, security, guards, cameras, uh, all of that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, my question is more technical. In um, the mayor's pr new language, his amendment to the original proposal. Um, how do we address that? Because we have not taken a vote on that. Does the city council have to vote on it before the planning board? Or Sorry. Uh, my understanding, the planning board would make a recommendation uh, to the city council and would include that verbiage. Uh, our recommendation, I'm not speaking for the whole board, uh, normally on public hearings we get the board together and we discuss it as a board. There's some members missing. We like to get their input. Anything else that comes to light before uh, we come back to the City Council. Our plan and is to meet on the 1st of uh, June and we will submit a proposal back to the City Council at that time. And it should include the language of the amended uh, by the mayor. Okay, so it would be before us before the end of June for us to take action. Right. Okay, thank you. Mr. again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and it's, it's along the lines of, of uh, Councilor Walsh's question with respect to the amendment. Um, and I, I defer to the judgment of the planning board on this, um, but there, I, I think I would discourage the inclusion of specific property owner names in the language. I, I, I see that the mayor has included them in parentheses, and I'm assuming that's just 
simply for reference. Is yes. that correct, Mr. Mayor? Yes, thank you, Mr. McGinn. That, that would be, I put that in to, to make it easier and for some for informational purposes, but the language, I think, should just be the MAP 88 and those specific parcel numbers. Right, so that would be, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and so it's helpful for reference purposes, but uh, I think it, it doesn't belong in the zoning ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions? At this time, I'd like to close the public hearing and um, thank you all for your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Bettencourt. So now what we're going to do is the City Council, I'm going to allow you to take it up if for any further debate, debate if you'd like. We do need to receive, if we do do some housekeeping. I need a motion on the floor to accept lit from the City Council late communications from Councilor, excuse me, from Chairman Barrett and from, um, Excuse me. So moved. You heard the motion. All in favor? Opposed? A vote. I also need a motion on the floor to accept to receive the amended language submitted by. On the motion, so moved. Thank you, Council Gravel. Um, um, I, I do want to give you, you know, one last bite at the apple as far as my council. Anybody has any further questions? The mayor is still here. It's up to you. I just want to allow my counsels that opportunity. Okay, we're going to take a two-minute recess. Thank you. Yeah. Well. Motion to recess is here in Council Sinowitz. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go back to the agenda. Um, item 8B. We are going to... 4B. Excuse me, 4B. We're going to continue that uh, hearing until June 8th. Um, sure. uh, I'll just I'll make one public. Is uh, is the um, applicant here for special permit hearing 4B? Didn't think so. So we're going to continue that to June 8th. Mr. Santos here. Mr. Santos, 36 Tremont Street, special permit for barbershop. Are you here? Not being here. We'll continue this to June 8th. Next on uh, the agenda. Well, is that a oh, motion by Council Matsoulis? Uh, Council Can you make that motion, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, make a motion to continue uh, 4B uh, for the purpose of special permit for a barbershop um, to uh, June 8th. So moved. All in favor, any opposed to vote? Thank you, Councilman Sewers. Item 4C, special permit for Caitlin Hansen, 649 Lowell Street, to operate an organic spray tan business. The please, court please read the public notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody, acting as a special permit granting authority, will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, May 25th, 2017, at 7.30 p.m., in the Franco Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell State, PBD Mass, on the application from Caitlin Hansen 5, Roland Road, PBD Mass, for a special permit to operate an organic spray tan business at 649 Lowell Street, PBD Mass, is filed in accordance with sections 4.2.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PBD Zoning Ordinance, PBD City Council Councilor Joel D. Sassler, City Council President. Thank you. Uh, could you state your name and your address for the record and tell us what you'd like to do? Thank you. Okay. Hello. My name is Caitlin Hansen. I live. Hello. <laughs> I live at Five Roland Road, and I would like to open up a blush organic spray tan boutique. Let me go further. Blush was founded um, because of the rising awareness of the harmful effects of UV rays. So this is a completely organic, um, guilt-free, paraben-free. PETA approved, um, eco-certified product. Um, it 
requires basically nothing to get rid of but water. Um, and usually when you get spray tan, you don't touch water. So hopefully we won't need it. Thank you very much. Anyone like to speak in favor? Anyone like to speak in favor? Anyone like to speak in opposition? Anyone like to speak in opposition? There being none, Council Sinowitz. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Through you, through you to the petitioner. One more time. What? So you you sit, you stand in a booth, and it just sprays you head to toe with it. How does this spray? How does this work? Just it's quickly. Not to, we don't want to get too involved in the technical um, aspect of this. So it's an individual booth, and the the um, client would go in, and I would spray tan them with a handheld um, air mist machine. All right. So there is a, um, a whole list of uh, items that the Board of Health um, has listed here. You're aware of this, yes. and you're going to comply with all these, these items by the Board of Health, because yes. we don't want any problems with that. Um, there's no odor. There's no misting into anything where it can affect any other tenants or anything to that. It's fragrance free, um, but we do have fans to for the mist that doesn't actually go on the body. The extra goes into the fan, the exhaust fan. Okay, is there um, what's the, what's the situation with underage um, under eighteen going in there? Is is do you need permission by your parents to the, to yes. go? Is a, if a fifteen year old kid comes in and says I want a tan, is that they need to have their waiver signed by a parent or guardian? Okay, perfect. And uh, the only other question was that you're open till 10, so right behind you there are there are butters, residential homes, so keep everything to the front. Don't be going out the back at, at 10 o'clock and, you know, any noise or trash or whatever. So um, I don't have any more questions. Open up to the co other council. Council Gould. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. President, excuse me. Uh, through you to Council Sinowitz Barry, is, is this the Comac property? Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Any other counselors? Council Senator. No other comment. Move to close the public hearing. The motion. All in favor, any opposed to vote? Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, I move approval of a special permit to operate an organic spray tan business at 649 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass. So moved. Thank you. Hear the motion. Roll call vote. Councilors Manning Martin. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Gould. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Charis. Yes. Sinowitz. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Motion carries 10 to nothing. One. Moving along to uh, reports of committees. Oh, excuse me. We're going to uh, procedurally item 4D. Um, Councilor McGinn. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would. Move to continue the uh, hearing, and uh, so moved. And on the mo uh, actually, uh, uh, let me retract that motion um, and restate it. Move to continue the hearing until such time as the council receives a recommendation from the planning board. So moved. For the motion, all in favor? Any opposed? To vote. Thank you. Item four. E, Council Turco, if you could receive the late communication from uh, Attorney Kelty and continue it until the date that he stated in his letter. Move to receive late communication. And move to, am I doing? Postpone. <laughs> move to, uh, to uh, have the public hearing on June 22nd. Thank you, Council Turco. You've heard the motion. All in favor and opposed to vote. Number five, reports of committees. Human Services Committee, Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we had a very uh, interesting and informative meeting. Uh, Councilor Walsh opened it up with uh, why we were there and introduced uh, Ms. Christy DiLoretto who is the chair of a organization that uh, based right here on Peabody Allergy and um, Asthma Awareness. She gave us a snapshot of where we're at as a um, society with um, 
allergies, specifically how it relates to the use of EpiPens. We were specifically there to try to get our arms around introducing EpiPens to our first responders, and we uh, think we made some headway. We had testimony from Health Department Sharon Cameron, Chief Pasden, Chief Griffin, and a gentleman from Atlantic Ambulance. And uh, with Councilor Walsh's help, we have formed a small working group made up of the above that I mentioned, along with any committee uh, councilors that would like to participate. So it was a very active meeting, and we're uh, making headway on getting our arms around how to support the EpiPen being on the front line. So that's uh, it's report of committees. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Being none. Councillor Walsh, Legal Affairs Committee, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight we met and we had a couple items on the agenda. Uh, the members of the committee were Councillors Manning Martin, Councillor Gravel, Councillor Matsoulis, and Councillor McGinn. Also present were Councillors Saslaw, Turco, and Sherist. Um, we had a discussion about the um, moratorium on billboards and how to proceed with a uh, permanent moratorium for lack of a better way to describe it. Uh, our city solicitor was present and gave us some pieces of advice, uh, basically saying that by removing the language in our current zoning that allows for billboards, we would be creating a permanent moratorium. So out of that discussion came a motion. It was a motion by Councilor McGinn, and it was moved to amend the zoning ordinance in the city of Peabody as dated um, April 8th of 2011, as most recently amended, and submit to the Planning Board um, by number one, repeal of section 11.6 and all subsections titled billboards, and secondly, amend section 11.6, prohibiting signs by adding two new subsections, section L, any stationary or digital billboard, and section M, any additional face to an existing billboard, billboard structure, or billboard monopole. So moved. Thank you. Any questions of Council Walsh? The, okay. the second item, um, Mr. Chairman, we, we left in committee, and that was the issue of... Um, Council Walsh, of, can we, why don't we take a vote on the first... Uh, oh, sure. Uh, Sorry. No problem. So uh, I think we'll take a vote on the first Council begin. Yeah, very, very quickly, just uh, following along on the motion, I think um, Council Walsh made reference to April 8th, and I think it's April 28th, so I'm sure they picked up on that correctly, but I just want to make sure it's accurate. Okay. Thank you. April 28th. April 20th. Thank you. Any further discussion? I'd like to take a, a roll call vote on this, if we could. Council Manning. Council Manning. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Council Manning Martin. Do you want to answer for me, Joe? Yes. yes. Okay. Gravel. Yes. Council Gravel. Turco. Yes. Gould. McGinn. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Matsoulis. Charis. Yes. Sinowitz. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Motion carries 10 to 9. Council Walsh. Thank you, Mr. President. The other item was the issue of special municipal employees, and it was decided to let that issue remain in committee to give people a chance to receive uh, and review the uh, legislation regarding special municipal employees, have them time to uh, review that, and then we'll have a discussion at a, a later date regarding that issue. Thank you, Council Walsh. Council Gravel. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. The, uh, Meeting of the Finance Committee was conducted this evening. Uh, representing the uh, Finance Committee were myself, Council Gould, Council Meeting Martin, Council McGinn, and Council Turco. Also present at the meeting were Council Mitsoulis, Council Charis, um, and Council and Council Walsh. I didn't want to forget him because he got forgotten this morning, the poor guy. And uh, the and he hasn't lived it down yet. There, there, are, um, two, there were two items on the agenda. The first item was a transfer of funds request um, from city council salaries and city, to, and city council stipend. Uh, basically, the request was to fund 
the uh, to, to fund additional salary amounts uh, to the council stenographer and the assistant clerk through June 30th. The amount of the request was $7,175. A motion was made by Council Gould to uh, take funds from uh, account 16, 10, 51, 120 in the amount of $7,175 and transfer it to accounts 1110511110 in the amount of $6,800 for city council salaries and also uh, transfer to 1110511190 in the amount of 375 uh, for a total of $7,175. Uh, that was approved unanimously, so moved. Thank you, Councilor Gravel. Uh, roll call vote, please. Councilor Manning Martin. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Cherka. Yes. Gould. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Charis. Yes. Sinowitz. Sasla. Yes. Motion carries 10 to. Then there were a, uh, a number of uh, park improvements um, which were um, requested from the CPA funds um, and in order to fulfill those improvements um, and restoration projects, the uh, request was made, a motion was put forth by Council Gould um, to move money from the, from the uh, Community Preservation Act Open Space Fund balance which is account 4033021 in the amount of $205,000. And uh, to put the money into 270-01811, 366 in the amount of $205,000. That happens to be the Community Preservation Act open space expense account. The motion carried unanimously, so moved. Thank you, Councilor Bell. And uh, vote please on the motion. Councilors Manning Martin. Yes. Gravel. Yes. Turco. Yes. Gould. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Walsh. Yes. Pitsoulis. Charis. Yes. Sinowitz. Sasla. Yes. Motion carries 10 to nothing when absent. Thank you, Council Gravel. No further motion. At this time we're going to I'm gonna we're going to go to item seven A, uh, the lease agreement for twenty seven Lowell Street. And then we'll go back to motions order resolutions. At this point, I'd like to ask the mayor to motion to receive the um, 7A. Councilor Walsh, thank you. Good evening again, Council. I'm here today to request authorization to execute a lease agreement uh, for the leasing of space at 27 Lowell Street. Uh, the property is owned by Luciano Dennis. Uh, many of you probably know. Uh, Mr. Dennis, he is, uh, he has a reputed resident. He owns a electrical company, Dennis Electric. You've probably seen some of his trucks. Uh, he's also uh, owned property and renovated property, um, most notably at uh, the spot of Kelly's Pub. Uh, and did a, an excellent job there um, at that location. Um, he purchased the property um, about a year ago, uh, maybe slightly less than that. And um, moving forward with the request tonight to enter into that lease agreement for that space. School committee, school administration, and Dr. Herbert Levine, our superintendent, is here today also to answer any questions. Uh, and I have been working for a number of years on uh, relocating the school administration offices. And we've been doing that now for a number of reasons. And I think this agreement benefits the city uh, in a number of ways. Uh, first is uh, I really believe in the idea of central government. Uh, right now, obviously, with the city hall being located downtown, that's uh, a significant drive to go to the school administration offices. I like having government together uh, where we can partner, uh, service um, our residents, and I think in a much more professional and much better manner. Uh, right now, there's, there's been occasions where um, our residents, school children, have a, had to go to the school admin administration, come back to City Hall, and then go back to school administration. I think being able to share services, being able to share um, um, supplies, things of that nature, uh, really benefits the city, uh, and I think it's an excellent location. Uh, also, uh, we have about, give or take, 950 students that are in the western, western part of the city. Uh, we have about 24, almost 2,500 students that are in this area here. 
uh, would be able to service some of their, ne their needs much better. So I think this particular area is much more centrally located, not centrally located geographically, but centrally located to be nearer the, the most people and service the most families and children uh, in this area. Uh, second reason is certainly, uh, I think this is a, a positive step for us in our downtown work. Um, working now for a number of years to continue to revitalize the downtown, uh, we'd have the opportunity to bring 15 to 18 professional um, employees to our downtown. Also, there's a number of residents that have, in, that have to come to meetings uh, to come for services uh, at the school administration building. And the more people that we bring down, the more people that are going to go to the shops, the restaurants, uh, and utilize what we have downtown. And uh, that's a, a great benefit and I think a, a real plus to, to bring, continue to bring people downtown and real professional people. Uh, and and um, I think that's a great benefit. The third is the one that I'm most concerned about, and that is the condition of the Kiley School. It is a subpar, substandard building. Uh, that I have grave concerns about. Um, I think all of you have been there at one time. I don't know if you've been there very recently, uh, but the building is continuing to deteriorate, and it's uh, become a grave concern uh, for many of us here in the city. I do not think it is professional space worthy of the talent that we have working uh, at our school administration offices. Um, I believe right now, if you go there, it is uh, everybody's spread out. There's offices or classrooms, um, and it's a very energy inefficient building. Uh, we are spending money hand over fist. Uh, to continue to remain there, we would have to put significant money into it, and significant money now into it uh, to make it last. Uh, there have been some um, um, uh, reports done as to the cost to renovate that building, and uh, it is significant cost. It is not an easy fix to make that space where we can continue to operate there. So that is my biggest concern, is the substandard subpar building uh, that exists there. I'd like to move those employees, uh, those 15 to 18 employees would come to 27 Lowell Street. There will likely be a couple of employees that would go to the high school uh, food service. We think will go to the high school uh, to be at the cafeteria there. Uh, but the offices of superintendent, assistant superintendent, business manager, uh, special education, uh, and some other key uh, administrative staff would be at the 27 Lowell Street location. Um, I think it's a, a good deal for those particular reasons. We put out an RFP, a request for proposals. Uh, we specified in the RFP that we were looking for 5,000 to 8,000 square feet of office space uh, in the downtown area, and uh, we had one bidder, and it was Mr. Dennis. Uh, we did, over the last couple of years, look at a number of locations, uh, explore different options for the city, uh, but we need, as required by state statute, to put it out for a bid, uh, and that's the bid that came in from Mr. Dennis. Um, we have visited the site many times. Uh, I think uh, many of you have been there. It's a former law office of David Ankeles, Lenny Bonfanti, uh, Peter Avernides, a number of attorneys had a practice over at that office. Uh, some of you may be in there. Uh, it is a very professional looking office uh, that we would be able to move right into, uh, with the caveat that there will be significant work being done to the um, entranceway, um, the bathroom, and the entrances to the first floor offices. We have to make the building handicap accessible. Uh, Al Tallarico, our building commissioner, Tim Healy, our facilities manager, have been to the site, uh, have met, uh, have preliminary discussions uh, with Mr. Dennis, uh, and significant money would be, have to be put into that building to extend the entryway and make a handicapped bathroom. We do not need a elevator because it is existing office space. However, the first floor must be completely handicap accessible and that work has to take place. That'll be work that's completed by Mr. Dennis, not work that the city of Peabody would be paying for. That would be work that has to be completed, approved by Mr. Tallarico and Mr. Healy before we would move into those offices. Uh, the, you've seen the lease agreement. Uh, it's a standard form lease agreement. Um, the terms, the first year, it's 6,000 square feet, uh, give or take. Um, and we'll be looking at $12 a square foot for year one, $13 a square foot for year two, $14 a square foot for years three to five. Uh, it's a five-year lease, however, uh, to give the city some flexibility, we did include two two-year options uh, that would be at our election uh, that we would decide to move forward with those options. Uh, if we did need some additional time. Um, 
at that location. And um, uh, what's important to note, to keep the Kylie operational, if we were to remain there, which I would strongly advocate not to have our employees there, but if we were to remain there, I believe money would have to be put into the building to bring it up to code in certain areas. But the utility costs alone, I mentioned the being an energy inefficient building. Uh, it's estimated at our school business, from our school business manager at the city school committee meeting Tuesday evening, uh, that it's approximately $90,000 a year we're spending on utility costs to heat that building and for uh, lighting. Uh, significant cost uh, compared to some of the other buildings that are more energy efficient. Um, I believe that offsets the money that we would have to pay forward for rent and for taxes, uh, making this, I believe, a budget neutral um, proposition. However, I do not believe it is budget neutral in the sense that we would have to put significant money towards it to get another year out of that building. Um, by shutting that building down and not having anybody there, uh, we'd be able to save those costs. Now, we would have to do some heat at that location uh, just so that the pipes won't freeze. Uh, so there would be some expense for utilities, but very minimal, and it would be a great, uh, great degree of savings for the city of Peabody. Uh, I mentioned the handicap accessibility. Uh, that would, we would not be able to do anything until it, it meets that. Mr. Dennis is ready to move forward uh, if I was able to get approval today uh, with work on that immediately. Uh, my hope would be that we could move in over the course of the summer. Uh, we have a lot of summer kids uh, that are ready, willing, and able, and happy to do work for the city in terms of moving expenses. We have some vehicles, um, and we would like to take advantage of that time to hopefully over the course of the summer uh, move, every, move everybody in and, um, and then be hopefully be operational uh, for September 1st as the school year opens up. Uh, that's the hope. I do believe this gives us some flexibility. Uh, to me, this is not a long-term um, agreement. Uh, five years, I believe, gives us flexibility in that uh, we can look at other options. Um, ideally, I do think school administration should be in a school, uh, and we can look at options, uh, certainly at the high school, as we look at what the future of the high school is going to be, uh, and other options we may have. But I do think this gives us flexibility at a very reasonable rate. Uh, we did do a survey of rent in the downtown area, uh, and we're well within those, that range of what is being paid for square footage in the downtown. Uh, but I do think this is a, uh, a good agreement, uh, provides us with flexibility. It gets the employees into a prof professional setting where they deserve to be. Uh, and also, I think, gives a little jump start uh, to our downtown work and really, ag again, brings together a government that I think we can meet the needs and service our residents in a much better way. Uh, it was unanimously approved by the school committee. They had a lot of questions. Uh, certainly during the course of our meeting, a lot of good questions, uh, but it was unanimously voted in support of the move. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President, I'd be happy to answer any questions, and I know Dr. Levine is here as well to answer any questions that are from the council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Open up to the council floor. Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mayor, I, I, you and I have had discussions about central government, and I think it's a a great move bringing those folks downtown for the sole reason that efficiency of driving up and down Lowell Street that could be a half hour whack from here to the Kylie School. I think it's, uh, it, it will save time in that aspect alone. But um, I just think it's a great move getting, getting the, the central government aspect of things straightened out. Um, I have a question, the parking lot is that going to be, I hope, designated for that building only? That there won't be, uh, you know, City Hall employees parking there because that, the, there's probably only 10 or 12 spots there, and I'd like to see that reserved for a school. Yep, school that department. would absolutely be for school business, and uh, uh, a, a large number of those spaces will be for handicap parking. Okay, and to bring those folks downtown and spend lunch and dinner money uh, is, is going to be a, a a plus also, so thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Council Turco. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'm just, uh, the, when, it, when I initially heard about this project, it was through the uh, school budget, and uh, Council Sass, President Sass, Laura and I attended that first meeting, and it was initially in the school budget for $154,000. 
And at some point, um, you had agreed to take 80,000 of that and put it toward the city side. I'm just wondering how we did that, why we did that, and um, if you could help me with that one. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, it was, there was some um, estimates made in terms of moving costs. I do believe that we can absorb a lot of those costs internally uh, rather than hiring a company to come in for moving of files and furniture and uh, there's a great deal of things that would have to be moved over to the location. I believe with our manpower and our trucks that we can absorb some of those costs. I do think there'll be a new phone system that will need to be installed. Uh, we have some capital for that that we had uh, obtained some years ago for some technology and other things that I think we can apply for, for the new phone system that will be necessary. Uh, but I was very comfortable because of the manpower we have uh, and the access to trucks that we'll be able to absorb a lot of those, those estimates that were made for, for moving costs. So there, there'll be no, since we haven't seen the city budget yet, there'll be no line item in the city budget for $80,000 anywhere? Uh, there will be no line item in the city budget. Uh, I believe if there is any money for phones, and there likely will be, that that will be able to be obtained through capital. Uh, I'll keep the council updated on that, but there will not be a line item in the city budget uh, moving forward. There is a line item in the school budget for uh, rent uh, and taxes in that line item uh, in the school budget. Uh, but there will be nothing coming to you for this um, as a line item for, for anything to do with this potential move. Okay, and um, also the one thing I looked up on that building is uh, I think it sold you know, 15 months ago for roughly $550,000. And I know earlier you had said that we've been looking to relocate for several years, and I'm just wondering the total budget cost, the total lease cost of this over five years is approximately the same amount of the purchase price of the building. So why didn't we just purchase this building so that we would have had um, something to show for this at the end of five years? And the, the only reason I ask that question, is, as I've expressed, is that I'm just reluctant to spend $550,000 on lease payments over a five-year period and then also lose upwards of approximately $80,000 in, in property taxes that uh, will no longer be on the rolls. Um, so I would have preferred to have purchased the building. I know maybe you would have also, so maybe you can help me with that. No, that's a good question. Those are good points. And it was something that I wrestled with, something that the school committee wrestled with. Uh, I know our school administrators wrestled with as well. Um, I think there were a number of reasons why I didn't want to move forward uh, with the purchase of the building. There would be significant money that we would have to put into it uh, for upgrades for um, uh, handicap accessibility. Uh, having a private company do the work, uh, there are different costs associated with it. If we were to obtain it, we'd have to do prevailing wage, which would come at a much significant cost. So I, I do believe that there would have been significant money that would have had to be put in uh, by the city to make it, to bring it up to code and to bring it up to usable space. And at the time, as we're all aware, uh, we were uh, looking into the purchase of uh, 2 Washington Street and 12 Washington Street. And I just wasn't comfortable moving forward with another purchase at that time. I think there were some pros to doing that, and you've outlined them. Uh, but I felt there was, we had asked a lot of us as a group um, and a lot, a lot from the taxpayers in order to make those purchases. And I kind of felt that it was a um, little bit more, a little too much to take on at this particular time to, to move forward with that. Also, I do not see this as a long-term building for us. Um, I think uh, as we do, um, look at further the future of, of our high school, uh, the future of some of our, other of our school and city buildings. Uh, I think there's gonna be other opportunities for us to relocate uh, and have a school administration building be a part of uh, the city in some other manner. So I didn't wanna tie us in um, to having that as a long-term building uh, because I felt that there was gonna be some other options for us. Thank you, I, I just have, I think, two more questions. Um, also, what I learned through the uh, school budget um, meetings was that in order for the MSBA to give us the $15 million to renovate the Kylie, the Kylie would have to remain in full use. And, and I'm, I'm wondering how we get around or skirt that. Um, if, if that is, in fact, the case, and maybe Dr. Levine can answer better to that. Um, if nobody is in the Kylie building, are we still eligible for the $15 million MSBA um, grant um, at some point? 
We, uh, we have applied, uh, and, and I'm sure you recall a few months ago, we came forward requesting to move forward with some statement of interest. One of those statement of interest was to, to renovate the Kylie, bring back that to, us, uh, to usable, bring that, excuse me, bring back that building to usable space. Um, that was approved by the city council, has been submitted along with uh, a few other statement of interest to the MSBA, Mass School Building Authority. Uh, we expect and been informed that we'll probably be hearing from the MSBA uh, at some point this summer. They told us the month of July. Uh, so I, I would expect that we'll be hearing during that time. Uh, if we're successful, great. Uh, if we're not successful, then we'll have to make some hard decisions. I think during the course of the summer, there's still going to be uh, full operation. Um, the MSBA uh, is aware of what our plan is, um, and uh, they've been notified as to what we're uh, moving forward with. They know uh, the condition of the building, uh, and they know our concerns about the condition of the building. Uh, if we are not successful, I think we'll have to have some real discussion as to the future of the building. If it's not a project that the MSBA deems worthy to partner with us, uh, then I think we'd have to make some decisions as to the future of that building. Uh, it would be extremely difficult to move forward with that project at the Kiley if we didn't have the, the MSBA approval. We've estimated, and we had a company come in, uh, the project cost to renovate the Kiley and bring it up, as you said, Mr. Turco, is about $15 million. Uh, we would need to get that 50, 56% reimbursement that we've been getting for other projects from the state in order to make that happen. I would be very, I wouldn't move forward with the request uh, to fund $15 million for that project. If we could get 56% from the state, that would be much more palatable uh, and I'd be comfortable moving forward. Uh, so I do think uh, in terms of this immediate uh, decision by the MSBA, um, we will still be operating as a school administration building probably over the course of the summer and maybe trickle into the school year. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, if, if not, and um, we have to make some decisions, whether we reapply with the MSBA or look at other options, uh, that's something we'll have to tackle uh, this, this fall. Thank you. And that brings you to my, my, me to my last question, which is probably most important to me, and you've heard me talk about it twice before, is redistricting. Um, and additionally, the, the, the issue that I have is that we're, we're moving school admin out of the Kiley with the hopes of getting the MSBA loan to renovate um, the Kiley and maybe move kids out of uh, Brown and other schools to create more space. But um, my question is still the, the what if on that, what in your much to your point, um, if that doesn't happen, um, as chairman of the school committee and as mayor, I'm, I'm asking you to to look at redistricting and, and to see what we can do to alleviate some of the overcrowding in the South Peabody school system. Um, there's just, it's, it's very important to me and I think that it, it needs to get done. It's been 13 years since we've done it and uh, I think it would be helpful to a lot of those, those students. No, that's well said and I couldn't agree more. It's, uh, it's been an issue that we've been dealing with. The Brown School in, in your ward is, uh, is at full capacity. Um, I know we have some other plans in place if we were not successful with the Kiley School renovation. Uh, Dr. Levine is want to speak to that because I know that's been something that is front and center and I really think this will be the, the year that uh, we make major decisions on that. Dr. Levine. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hello, friends. Um, if we are successful with the Kylie School, it will limit the amount of redistricting that we have to do. So by waiting a couple of months to see whether or not we're successful with the Kylie, um, that'll allow us some flexibility if we are. But to your point, uh, Councillor, um, we have uh, redesigned a couple of programs at the Brown for next year. We've done a lot of legwork with the teachers, um, with uh, the par I'm meeting with parents tomorrow morning, uh, parents at the Carroll. Uh, we're re redesigning that program as well. Uh, we will open four uh, classrooms at the Brown that we have not had open before. Uh, that will take place as of September because of this redesign. There will be two classrooms at the Carroll that were not um, uh, open before. So uh, I'm also taking a look at the uh, McCarthy School, particularly the kindergarten classes. A letter will be going out tomorrow uh, to uh, look at o open enrollment students because our kindergarten this year and our first grade next year, same kindergarten students, are just too big. Uh, and the McCarthy doesn't have any uh, classroom space because it has eight early childhood programs. So uh, we'll be moving some of those children um, back to their home schools, uh, which will free up uh, uh, some space in the uh, grade one 
so as to not overcrowd that. Um, so I think that uh, over the summer uh, and the work that we've already done, uh, at least three of the schools that have been having difficulty uh, will be much more flexible for next year. Uh, and we'll also have the answer from uh, MSBA. Uh, also, we will take a look at redistricting, but um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, intrude on the lives of people a little bit less um, after all of these things fall into place. Thank you for that, Doctor. Um, I, I guess I, I, I shouldn't have said um, I want you to take a look at it. I, I'd really like to see it done. Um, we can look at it over and over again, but um, do we have a time frame? I mean, I, I'd like to see something in writing in front of me that, that says we're going to open up space in these schools. Um, it's not fair to these kids, and, and to keep discussing it over and over again, um, I'd, I'd just like to see a, a policy in place or a plan in place, and I'm told that um, school committee member Hawkman actually had a plan, and, and to your credit, Mayor, you, you put that aside temporarily because of the, the Higgins and some other things that were going on. Um, where is that plan, and can we look at that plan, um, and, and can we be ready to implement that plan if everything falls through on the Kylie? Uh, I, I do look at redistricting a little different than you do, Councillor. I, I look at redistricting as a last resort. It is very, you know, you, you mentioned it being unfair to kids. I do think it's unfair to kids. I, I'm worried about moving kids that have been going to school for those years uh, and moving them to different schools. That's very traumatic for a student to have to handle a move in second or third grade to another school. So um, what we've been working on is to try to look at all other options to avoid having to redistrict. Uh, it's here in front of us. There's going to have to be some redistricting, uh, but we've already, as you, as you heard, opened up six classrooms, um, and that's going to have a significant effect at the schools that are most crowded. Uh, so uh, we're continuing to work on that. We want to see what the MSBA has to say, uh, but I believe we do have a plan, and we are implementing it. Six classrooms is significant. There's two more classrooms that are being moved to the Burke School that were vacant last year, uh, so that the Burke School is going to be getting some additional classes. Uh, Dr. Levine didn't mention that. Uh, but there'll be two classes that we're taking from other schools and moving those over to the Burke School, uh, where there is some room. Uh, the McCarthy School, this, the program over there has to be reviewed. Uh, but to, to say that we don't, we we aren't doing things is inaccurate. We are we are um, taking action, um, and I'm trying to avoid redistricting at all costs because I do think it's unfair uh, at times to move kids. Uh, so I try to balance the needs of those students as well as the needs of those teachers. And it's very difficult, um, and it's not something that I take lightly, uh, but I do think we're making efforts in that, in that regard. Uh, but certainly we can keep you updated uh, as to the movement forward. I do think this is a big issue this year is the redistricting. Uh, but I am trying to uh, limit it. It's, it's, not a, it's not avoidable, but I'm trying to limit it as best we can. Thank you, and I agree it is a last resort, but I, I honestly think that we've reached that point where it's the last resort is here, but thank you. Council Gravel. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, I never thought that uh, using the Kylie School as a administration building was the greatest idea on earth. Uh, for a couple of dozen people, we run a building that was built for hundreds. Um, and you can't run half the building, you have to run the whole building. And as the owners of that building, we have to maintain it and keep it up. And um, it's, it's really been pretty much of a challenge. But considering where the administration building was, the Pigeon Coop on Endicott Street, um, <laughs> it was clearly an upgrade and an improvement, and at least an atmosphere where education could be thought about before you thought about where you could sit. So, uh, you know, I, I was kind of glad at the time that they found a good home, one that you didn't have to worry about wearing an umbrella hat on um, to, to work. So uh, I, I, I think there is a lot of savings to, uh, to shutter the school. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, renting versus buying, I think the last thing we need to do is to buy another building um, and uh, particularly one that doesn't have a permanent use. It's one thing when you buy a building and you have some, you know, idea that you're going to keep it for permanent use, but um, we'd be hard pressed to think of what you're going to do with 6,000 square foot office building for 20 years. And during that 20 year period of time, you may have bought it for a lot less money, 
um, but you're going to end up with uh, a lot of maintenance that goes with the building. All of us that own one know that it's not free. A roof on that building would be about forty thousand dollars, and you know, just repairing the elevator in there and such. There's there's a lot that goes with it. So, I'm I'm not even adverse against uh, renting the building. Um, I think you got a competitive rate. Um, you know, when we were renting downtown, we were paying uh, about a buck a foot. The same the same idea, twelve bucks a foot, a buck a foot a month. <clears throat> It was triple net. We had to pay taxes, um, so you, you, you're getting off on that end. Um, I, I don't know. Do you know what the energy costs, what the uh, the you know use rate costs are per foot on a on a base? On I don't basis? have that number. Yeah. Uh, well, I would guess it's it, it's got to be. I mean, in, it's similar in age to my building on Main Street, and I would guess it's got to be for three or four bucks a foot anyway. Um, to, to run the building with electric and heat and air conditioning and such. Um, so uh, it, you are, I looked through the lease, I couldn't find anywhere where you're on the hook for any repairs. That's all being taken care I'm of. I'm sorry, the what? Repairs. Yes, we'll, well, we, have, we will have uh, as part of a regular uh, maintenance schedule, uh, one of our custodians that will be doing the day-to-day -day maintenance, uh, but the, the landlord will be responsible for any large items. Yeah, because when I was at 49 Lowell Street, I got stuck with a lease that you had to do all the inside repairs. That wasn't a lot of fun, um, especially when there was a fire next door. Um, so it looked, I couldn't find anywhere in the lease where you were on the hook for that, so that seemed like a pretty good deal. Um, I, I think his rate of increase was, was pretty decent. Um, and uh, in, in terms of, uh, I, I do have a question of the city clerk. Uh, are we going to have voting still at the Kylie? So are we going to unshutter when it's, when it's election time? The Board of Registrars will be submitting a proposal for our next meeting to move out of the Kylie. So, so we this are year. Gonna... This year. Okay. So yeah. be, beyond that, though, I mean, we're going to start, we're going to shut down and start up and shut down and start up? Is that no, the well, idea? I'm at this point, it would be a permanent move unless it didn't work out. We're looking to go next door to the West Church. Right. All right, I, I think that's, that's pretty much my questions. I, uh, I you know, I'm, I'm not against doing this. I think it's, uh, you know, well as, you know, for people listening out there, it might sound like when you said it's a great distance, it's not a great distance between Peabody Square and uh, Kylie School. It's probably four and a half miles but uh, it can be the most painful four and a half miles of your life um, at certain points in the day in particular. I know moving to Centennial Park, I cut 30 minutes out of my commute every day, and uh, so have most of my employees. And, uh, and I can also attribute what you said to, uh, as it pertains to bringing people downtown, more workers downtown. I happened to go into Brothers uh, yesterday, and. Uh, uh, his only complaint was, he says, the weekend's great, but, uh, you know, during the week it's pretty dead and there's not enough to keep, you know, that restaurant sustained. So the more people we bring downtown who eat downtown and, and uh, for lunch and other things, then the, the better off the downtown's going to be. So uh, good luck. Thank you, Councilor Sinowitz. Thank you, Mr. President. So um, my concern is this, um, and I watched some of the school committee budget hearings and some of the cuts that looks like that's going to need to be done. So my concern is for a short-term fix, we're going to spend well over $600,000 to put the uh, administration building, pick the people out. What is it, 15 people, Mayor? 15 to 18. 15 to 18. So, I mean, I don't know what the situation is at the high school, but I think it would be, I heard enrollment is down up there. And if there's any way we can get the administration, because this is temporary, what I'm hearing is temporary, because if it was permanent, I would disagree with Council Gravel, if we're going to buy that building and in five years we own it. And if that's a long-term plan to keep the administration building, that's a different discussion. But if we're going to take it stay five years, drop 600 grand, and then leave, I don't think that's a great investment, unless we're in a position where it's unattainable and we're screwed. 
But number one, it's a flood zone. So get ready, because it will happen. And I don't know what's going on the bottom floor. Now, I know up at the Kylie, they had a copy machine center. Is that going in that building? At the Kylie? Yeah. Well, there is no basement at this location. It's a slab. No, no, but the lower level. Boom. Yep. I've been down there many times when that had yep. water inside there. But is the Kylie, is, are they taking the, um, the office part where they run all the forms and everything? Are they putting it in that building, or is that staying at the Kylie? That'll be, oh, no. I mean, there's going to be all, the, all those machines. They'll be coming along. To okay, the, the so yep. that alone, you're probably going to need an electrical upgrade, because that's only been offices uh, in that building because that's my business, so all my machines have a lot of power amperage. So I don't know if that's been calculated, and you might need another service. I don't know how many amps are in that building. That could cost you 20 grand right there. So uh, the other concern I have is, this is a 9% increase per year on the, on the rate, plus triple, basically triple net with the plowing tax. Plowing's not free, even though the city does it itself. Then the taxes, and uh, I don't know if we want to raise his taxes after this. <laughs> All right, <laughs> just a thought. So um, I, I have a pr real problem with spending it. I would rather see if there's a way to get it to the high school and use that money to a school programs, teachers, whatever you got to do to make the situation better for the kids. Um, but I don't think as it stands that I would support uh, spending 600000 on that building, knowing what I know about that building, because I did look at that building. Um, you know, it looks great on the outside. It was all stuccoed, but I don't know about the, um, uh, there was a lot of work done to it before that, uh, the previous owners did. Um, and, and this is just out there. We have the, um, the church up on Washington Street. I have never been in the building. There's 10,000 square feet in the building. I don't know, um, somebody said it was leased. I don't know if that's true, or I've never seen any lease or heard of any lease on that. Is there space, you know, to how? I, I don't even know what it is. Is it just a big cavern like this, or is there offices there? I, I don't know. So that was just in my mind. We have that building there. It's sitting there. There's 10,000 square feet. I don't know what the condition is. That might not be anything. But um, so that's my concerns, and I just think it's a lot for a temporary fix, and I think I'd rather put it that money towards school programs or teachers or guidance councils or whatever we, we need to do. So that's just my take, man. Thank you. Well, I, I mean, of course, I'd, we'd much rather put that money towards those type of, you know, having more teachers and programs. The issue is we're faced with making a decision either to invest in the Kylie uh, or to, to move forward with this move. Um, I don't think it's tenable to put all of the offices at the high school right now. Um, I do think we're going to have to make a decision. Uh, in the very near future, as to the future of the high school, we're looking at uh, renovation, doing an addition, uh, or even a new school at some point in the future. So those are decisions that are going to have to be made in the years ahead, where I think it can be accommodated, not right now, but in the future. Uh, the the St. Paul's Church is is not doable. We did look at that property uh, very closely. It is um, very chopped up as to how um, things are done. There's um, the money that would be put in for handicap accessibility alone. Um, would be cost prohibitive and uh, that was a building we looked at certainly uh, to see if there's something we could tackle on our own end um, because there are some benefits to having it there parking certainly we own it uh, but it was it was the way the building is uh, set up it would have been very problematic and very costly I, I would suggest it because I did the same thing when I was uh, behind next to the fire department when I when I bought an eighty thousand dollar piece of equipment um, I had them come in and build it two two three feet uh, of, of a support platform off the ground, so I would highly recommend you do that yeah. if you decide to go into that Good space. Um, as far as the Kylie is concerned, once again, when it was pro proposed to us, it was a wish list. There was all these different school items, and then if we were to get it, it would be come back to be discussed. I don't know. You might be light on 15 million. I don't know what the proposal would be to get that back to back into shape to put a school in there. But um, is that school, have you, have you, has OSHA come in and said it's not inhabitable? Or is, are you just making this decision to say we don't feel it, they belong there, there's repairs from it. Has OSHA come in at anything and said that this school is not safe, you should be out of there? No, we've never, no, that's we've never, never been okay. reviewed by OSHA. It's our internal, um, our internal 
uh, department heads that have reviewed the building and concerned about its long-term status. And once again, if it does come back and, and we don't get approval on that project, so now where are we? In terms of that plan that Dr. Levine talked about relieving, I don't want to get into uh, redistricting, but there's a lot of homes coming. You know it. Yep. We all know it. And it's going to have to be redistricting. A lot of homes are coming. Four-bedroom four bed four colonials are coming, at least 100 that I know of. So there's going to be a lot more 80 units in, in, ward, uh, in ward 2. So there'll be more kids. So uh, if this doesn't go through, what's the backup plan as to, is it, I guess it's full-blown full redistricting? If, if you can't use this school for a uh, special. Uh, yes, I think we have to take the next step with redistricting. I'm going to ask Dr. Levine uh, to submit a report as to the action we've taken this summer for the next school year to, to show how we've uh, been able to um, make some changes through redesign and movement of programs uh, to some other schools to show how we've freed space up. And we can present to you uh, in writing a, a further plan as to what the steps we would have to take. Um, but. It's a good problem to have in a sense because I met uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, with um, about 30 brokers at Coldwell Banker and uh, we went over to what's taking place in the city. There was a lot of questions about projects and plans and things and um, the feedback that I got from the brokers about the interest in the city of Peabody and I'm going to share with you, I'll, I'll submit it for the next council meeting. They gave me a breakdown of the trends in terms of Peabody, the houses that are selling in Peabody. And um, you know we're a hot market right now, and young families are moving to the city. I think a lot of it has to do with the investments all of us have made uh, in the city, um, particularly with the Higgins Middle School. Um, but it's amazing how quickly the houses are going. Uh, it's amazing um, the interest in the city. And uh, as a result of that, I think developers see that and are trying to find where to build because they know houses are, are selling very well in the city and you're absolutely right councillor we have 23 homes that are being proposed to be built over on uh, at the end of Birch Street that you want what's that 24 24 homes being being built um, and then we all still have a number of properties being developed uh, up in Route Ward 1 um, Councillor Turco's favorite project off of Bartholomew Street and I know there's other properties being built as well so it's, uh, it, it has to be, it has to be uh, met. I'm hopeful that uh, we can have the option of, of uh, partnering with the MSBA, but if not, um, you know, it's unavoidable. I just want to try to limit it. I remember when I was in school, we had redistricting, um, and it was very challenging for a number of families. Um, uh, I remember it very well. I was in fifth grade and it was very challenging for a number of families. And it's always stuck with me and I've always been very concerned about it. Uh, but ultimately there's gonna have to be some done. Uh, but I just wanna be very frank with all of you that it's something that I, I'm trying to avoid and limit as much as possible. And I, I would look, just as, just as I mentioned, I would look into the electrical requirements of that building and what the yes. service is because it could be quite expensive. I think that's um, a good suggestion. And I like the idea about raising the platform. Yeah, you better. <laughs> but I, uh, It'll happen. I do think though, I, I do wanna state I don't want to be afraid of, of water concerns. We, um, we have had the most rain this spring uh, in years. And I don't, I'm knocking on wood, uh, but we have done extremely well. This is the most rain we've, we've uh, received in a spring in decades, uh, total accumulation. Uh, and we've held up very well. Uh, we've had three major flood warning, warnings, um, and we haven't had any, any flooding. Uh, when factors come together, we're still in some jeopardy. Uh, but there's, without question, the work that all of us have done together with the Scouting Woods um, retention pond, the maintenance program that we're now on on a regular basis, have paid some dividends. And um, there's no doubt that we can handle water better in our downtown. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, and, uh, but I, no, I don't want to say that those are solved by any manner. Uh, but I don't want to shy away from uh, continuing, continuing to invest. Just as long as you know what you're getting yourself into. Yep. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Council Walsh. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, through you to the mayor. Just a couple questions. Um, on page 5 in section 9 on the indemni indemnification and liability, um, it, it talks about the, uh, the tenant shall save the landlord harmless from all loss and damage occasioned by the use of escape of water or by bursting pipes more language here, but um, 
in the last sentence talks about uh, uh, provided, however, that any such neglect or nuisance shall be the result of act or of commission, omission, nonfeasance, or malfeasance by the tenant. And I'm curious to exactly what that would be. Um, you know, what would what would the tenant have to cause to be responsible for the damage? I mean, if a pipe is bursting and things, I can't believe that the tenant would be the one who would be at fault. So I'm curious as to why we have this, and I, I understand this is fairly boilerplate, but that was the only thing that really concerned me in the least, that we, we seem to be on the hook if anything goes wrong. It's his building. I love, I love that word, malfeasance. It's always one of my favorite words. Um, it's standard language. I think, do you want to tackle it, Councillor? You, you put that, almost all, all commercial real estate leases have that in there. It's the protection that the, that the tenant won't shut the heat down or do something silly like put a check valve into the bottom floor so that they don't have a backflow and they explode the pipe. You know, I've, I've got some personal experience with that. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, that's, what they, that's what they do it for. Thank you. The um, couple other questions. One is um, if we move forward with this and you do close down the Kylie School you know, no matter what happens in the short term, um, what are the plans for securing the, the building? You know, I, I have some deep concerns about having another building sitting empty and, and how we protect that. There will still be, we'll still be maintaining uh, some equipment there, um, some files there um, for, for the time being. So there will be some activity. Um, uh, I can, rather than me guess, I can have Tim Healy uh, present or submit a, a writing as to what actions he's going to take. Uh, he did. He does have a plan for that, um, but it will. There will be some activity there uh, in the meantime. So there will be eyes at that location. Okay. And just lastly, Mayor, um, you mentioned that the utility costs for the Kylie School run approximately ninety thousand dollars a year, and we're not quite sure what the utility costs will be at the Lowell Street location. So it's not a, a, a complete wash, but I, I, I suspect it's going to be a lot less expensive at this location. Um, so some of that rent really will be in savings. I mean, you'll be paying the rent through the savings of the utilities at the Kylie from your presentation, the way I understand it. Um, and the other part of that, you know, I just want to echo a couple of the other councilors who said, um, you know, they like the fact that we have more people coming downtown. And I think it speaks volumes that the city is willing to invest itself in the downtown area. Because if we don't invest in it, how can we expect anybody else to? So I think this is a win-win. Uh, I understand it's short term for the school department, but I do think in, in the, the short term, it also sends a message to other investors that, you know, at PBD, uh, the downtown area, is open for business, and we, in fact, are confident that um, the downtown will operate pretty smoothly. Yeah, we know that there's always that op that you know rare time that maybe we will get some water, uh, but I think you commented on that, and I think you're right that you know we have been fortunate, and we are moving in the right direction. So uh, I think it's good that we're investing down here. Thank you, Councilor Walsh. Councilor Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and just to re reiterate one thing that has been said that if the SBA um, does approve the project, we had approved just a wish list of items to go forward to the SBA. And if they do approve this one particular item to reimburse us at 56%, it still has to come back to this council to decide if we want to foot the other portion of that bill for a building that has been described tonight as um, uh, that we need significant money to put into it and significant renovations. So we still have to approve moving forward um, so that we have another opportunity to review that in more detail of what needs to be done if the SBA approves it, because all we've done is approve the wish list to go forward. And um, the, I, I'm not a commercial landlord, so this is not my area of expertise, but just simply looking at the rent for five years, it, the rent increases 33, and we're paying the rent. We're not collecting the rent. So 
Uh, we're paying rent and the fee increases, I think, about 33% from year one to year five. And that sounds like a significant amount of money uh, to me. Again, I'm, I'm not versed in commercial rentals, uh, but for, for if you were to look at rents for a private tenant or private businesses, that would rent somebody right out of, of the tenant from going from 30, up 33% in five years. So that, to me, does not seem like we're getting a deal at all um, with such increases from year one to year five being 33% that we have to pay in rent. And if you could um, enlighten me as to the reference that not only are we paying rent, and maybe this is common too in commercial, I don't know, um, but not only are we paying rent, but then we also have to pay a proportionate share of real estate taxes on the property. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, if, we're, if we're renting, yet we also have to pay property taxes when we don't own the property. So if you could explain that to me, and then just a couple more comments, and, and I'll uh, defer to the mayor. The um, church that we purchased on uh, Washington Street. I'm wondering, are we getting that type of rent as well in, in that large number, and are we also charging them for real estate property taxes in our deal with whoever is renting that property? Uh, so I'd be interested in knowing that. And um, I think, and then I think lastly, um, just, I see on page eight, the town of Wilmington is referenced. Um, obviously, this was something, a boilerplate maybe <laughs> picked up from another town, the town of Wilmington, obviously. So if this does move forward, I, I, I won't be supporting it, um, but if it does move forward, you'll need to fix that typo to have the city of Peabody. It says the city, it's on page eight, it says town of Wilmington. So thank you, those are, those are my concerns, thank you. Great, thank you. I, um um, I do disagree with uh, the, your analysis of the numbers. Um, it's an increase from $12 to $14. Uh, I don't think that's 33%, but uh, that is a, a complete survey we did. It is a triple net lease. That is what commercial um, lease agreements go for. I think if you uh, asked commercial tenants downtown, that's what, um, that is a typical standard agreement. It's called a triple net lease. Uh, as to the, um, as to the, uh, Church property, uh, that is being rented to uh, two churches that utilize space, uh, and pretty much we are covering utility costs um, for that property. Um, being a church, taxes are, are uh, um, exempt for them, and um, that's just something we absorb. Uh, but it, um, we did a very careful survey of all the property owners in this area and some other downtowns. Uh, I feel this is appropriate uh, for the, the type of space for downtown property, uh, and I do disagree with your, uh, how you arrived at that number. Thank you. The year five is $15, so it, goes, it doesn't go to 14, it goes to 15. Year one is $12 per square, and then year five is $15 per square. So, um, and then lastly, uh, it just, unless I missed it, why, would, why is it that we pay property taxes as a renter? And why do we pay real estate property taxes as a renter? I don't get that. So I don't, if you could answer that, thank you. Uh, year one is $12, year two is $13, year three through five is $14. Uh, if we do exercise the option, then it would go up. Um, thank you, thank you, I see that, okay, thank you. And because then if you exercise, it goes up to 15 if we extend it, and then actually if we extend it another year, it goes up to 16. That would be two years. Yep. There would be two okay. years of 15 if we exercise that option. It would be two years of 16, 16 if we exercise that option. Yes, I apologize. I did go into one year extended. So it goes from 12 to 14. and So it's still a significant increase, but it's not 33. I went into the next year. Thank you. Council Chair. Thank you, Council President. To, to, to you, to the Mayor, the, um, on the, the upgraded electrical debt, Councillor had talked about. Would that be something that the landlord would be responsible for also? I'm sorry, Councillor. If we had to again. upgrade the electrical, the panels, uh, as Councillor Sinowitz has indicated, would that be a responsibility of the uh, landlord? 
That's something that we're going to speak to them. They may have the capabilities. I'm not sure. That's yeah. something that we're going to have to review with the building inspector and Mr. Healy. Uh, I am going to bring that up because I thought that was a good suggestion from Council yeah. Sinowitz. Um, because certainly we'll be utilizing more than a standard office. Yeah. Oh, do you want to speak? Yeah. Um, just, uh, I'm not an electrician, so I don't have any idea, but they had big machines in there as a uh, legal office. Uh, we saw the machines operating on both the first and the second floor. So I'm not sure we'd have to upgrade with the machines that we have. Yeah. Just beware. The, um, also, it, it, you know, three years ago, I had the opportunity to look at that building as a school committee member where you're looking at it then. Um, and that water issue did come up, and we, we, we spoke to the landlord then who talked about not getting much water there for what other particular reasons. The, um, and I had, you know, being on the school committee for many years, dealt with that Kylie building and, and dealt with the um, office, well, classroom office, as you could, could call it. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't the best resources of what, what we have. So, again, as Council Wall says, it's, I think it says a, a statement to the city in downtown that we're moving our offices downtown. That's obviously easier for the city hall uh, people to work with. So I do recognize that. I see the conditions of the Kylie. I understand. Now, this was voted on by the school committee unanimously voted. It was six to zero. Six to zero. So I, I'm sure they went through it with a, um, a fine comb, too. I certainly know they do their, their work. The parking spots that um, uh, Councilor Gould had spoke about, it's about 10 to 12 parking spots there. I believe I believe it's a little more. I think it's 15. 15. And, and I agree with Council Gould that we use utilized by school personnel. Absolutely. Only school. Um, but in the evening, it could be utilized by our downtown um, shoppers also, right? I know as a private building now, it's chained off and people aren't allowed to park there. But it is once it becomes rented by us, um, the public will be able to utilize those parking sp spaces off uh, school time, the weekends, correct? We would have to get approval from the landlord for that uh, to allow for parking because uh, it is a private lot. Um, however, I think that would be something that I we think could you work can with. probably work that into the deal, correct? Yep. Yeah, great. And um, and I know the taxes that we pay is triple net. Usually, most commercial uh, real estates, as Council Gould um, Gravel had mentioned too. Um, but do you know how much they actually pay to the city for taxes on that property? Rough estimate. I thought it was approximately 15,000. 15,000. So after our portions? 10, 5? 13. 13,000. Okay, so somewhere around there. So basically after, you know, some deductions of what we pay for triple net, we're almost getting back as a city two months' rent because he's paying the taxes. Right? We pay triple net. We pay a small portion. But triple, the net, triple net, just so I, I may not have understood not myself because Council Manning was asking good questions. I, triple net means we pay for rent taxes and utilities the total taxes whatever are the square footage is that we rent we pay our proportion okay so uh, but it's the majority of the building sure the large okay majority of the building. thank you for uh, clearing that up in the space at the uh, Kylie that since we're not going to be having offices there will we be utilizing that for more storage I know City Hall has an issue with storage will you be able to use that also as a Yes, that's, that could be a location for, for our storage needs. Uh, I don't think we're going to be packing a bunch of equipment and files in there. Right. I think it will primarily just be the school items out of there for now uh, until we come up with um, the long-range plan. Um, and then uh, depending on how things go with the MSBA and, and the future plans for that building, we'll have to make some adjustments. But I don't think we'll be moving things in wholesale there, no. I count on yourself and the school committee had gone through this quite well in understanding what they need. Um, I certainly will be supporting this. Good luck. Thank you. Councilman Sewers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've been just sitting back listening to everything here. And, <clears throat> and I just had to come up with a few things that I have expertise in. I'm a real estate salesman, as most of you know. My wife and my two daughters, uh, we with Century 21 for a while. And when I heard some of the comments about the market, how hot it is, the last three homes we sold, we sold in a day over asking. 
That's how hot the market is in Peabody. And then I sit back and I say, I think I've been on the council a little too long. I'm going on 35 years here, because everything I'm hearing here tonight, I, I predicted it many years ago. And the reason all this happened is because of the zoning changes we had in the city. And we decided to make Peabody a big city, and the city has grown. And it's a big city right now. And it's getting bigger, and it's getting more expensive. Now I got to put myself in a, what am I sitting here trying to decide the rent? What's the price, you know, is it? Well, I know about rents too. Uh, a year ago, two bedroom apartment was $1,000. Today it's $1,600. Three bedroom is $2,500. I was looking at uh, the, uh, the price, the price you're talking about, the, tri the triple net lease downtown here, and I looked at it and I said, well, well, you know, your, your, your rent's going for, you know, $12 a foot, and uh, the increases, what I see they're going to come to, I, I don't see that as being out of line at all. You know, and, and then I have to ask myself, well, is there a need for what we're doing here? I mean, what you're coming and asking us for? And there is, and there is. And I, I don't have a problem because this is the times we're living in. The city is growing. It's gonna get more expensive. Homes have gone from 200,000 four or five years ago. The, my neighborhood homes are selling for 400000 now. I never thought I'd see that, you know? So when we're talking about the rent, uh, listen, in five years, you know, you probably locked yourself into a pretty good lease, the way the, the, way the prices in the city are going. And, for, and, and to be very honest with you, only because I said, I, do I like this? Do I like the way things turned around in Peabody? No. No, I wish we could go back when I was a kid in Peabody where it was very affordable, you know, and, and uh, I didn't have to see my friends move out of the city because uh, they can't afford it today. But that's just the way things are today. And we have to do with what we have. We're the leaders in this city. This is uh, the situation we're in right now. I, I don't have a problem with you moving downtown, Mayor. You know, when we talk about, uh, you know, the flooding, hey, look at Nobody knows if we're going to flood tomorrow. You know, so far it's working. Are we going to get a storm that, that, uh, that we're going to say, whoa, look, I told you, you should have never got down there to flood it. You know, it probably will flood. But you know what? I'm not going to blame you. You're doing your best to try and stop it. You know, but... Anyways, I just thought I'd throw my feeling off. I, I, I will support that, uh, that uh, move you're trying to make, man, because I think the city is, uh, was put in a position to do that through no fault of your own. Thank you. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the questions that I had have, have all come out uh, through the good questions of my fellow counselors, and, and I am supportive of this for uh, many of the reasons uh, laid out by the, by the mayor and uh, substantiated by other counselors through the course of the debate. So um, I think everybody's had an opportunity to speak at this point, Mr. President. If there's no other comments, I'd be ready to make a motion. I would like to make some comments, I think Council Manning would like to make some co oh, has another comment. Council Man Manning. Yes, thank you, and uh, t through you to the mayor. Um, my apologies. The after the final five years, it's a 17% increase. But if we were to extend it two years, it would be a 33% increase. So yeah. I looked down to the um, last line, assuming it was the fifth year. It was a two-year extension. So 17% increase after five years, and if we extend it, it'll go 33%. So my apologies. Thank you. Thank you. And if anyone else, as everyone's done, I'd like to make a couple comments myself. Um, 
So I, there was a lot of comments. I, I was a little bit confused. A few things, but they have been cleared up. I, the one thing that um, the mayor and the superintendent used the terminology, we've opened up six, six classrooms. And I, I was a little bit confused, but I guess what that means to me is because we know there was overcrowding this year at the Brown. Why don't we open them up early in the year? But I guess now what I understand the mean is that you've moved programs out of the Brown to open up those classes to use for those children in that neighborhood, if, if I understand correctly. No, uh, thank you um, to you, sir. The, uh, the programs that, the changes that we're making will be in effect in September coming. So the, the schools right now are still in the same shape that they've been in. There will be a program uh, that will be moving uh, and that will entail two classrooms from the Carroll to the Burke. And one of the reasons that we're moving that program is because the sister program to the program that we're moving resides at the Burke. So it's a great marriage. Everyone's in favor of that. Um, the program that we're creating for next year is uh, called co-teaching. Uh, there will be a special ed teacher and a regular ed teacher in the classrooms. Um, because of that model, we will open up four classrooms uh, in, at the Brown. We will have need for four fewer classrooms, teaching classrooms at the Brown, uh, which they have not had uh, this year. Uh, we're talking about the autistic programs and uh, other special ed programs that will be co-teaching model rather than um, the model where uh, individual teachers are teaching in separate classrooms. That will also be implemented in September um, the uh, professional development, uh, the training for the teachers, uh, and all of the work that needs to be done in order to successfully implement that program will take place beginning in June and go through July. So uh, we've already uh, talked with all parents involved in those programs, and they're thrilled because they know that it's a better model of direct services for academics and for socialization. Uh, they're very pleased with it and uh, they all approve it, so we're, we're very happy to move forward with that. So not only do we get what we think is a better program, but we get four classrooms of space at the Brown. And I appreciate your answer, but sometimes you give me so much information, I, I, I have a hard time following. So I'm gonna go back to my original question. So are you taking students, when you say you're opening up classrooms, so the classrooms, are you take, are you moving, um, the you know the, the pre-k. I'm just you, you, sometimes you give me too much, and I you say you're opening up four classrooms. Let's we'll choose, we'll choose the brown. Let's just keep it just at the brown. I, you know, right? Just the brown. You're opening up four They're classrooms. All, all levels of students. Um, uh, special ed classes such as at the brown are, are broken up by age groupings, rather than strictly grades. Um, it's by academic progress, and the state has very strict rules as to how much of a spread in age they can be in any one classroom. So what we'll be doing is uh, where some of these classrooms have been individual classrooms, we are now moving kids and teachers together. And as opposed to having one teacher and paraprofessionals in a classroom, we'll be having fewer paraprofessionals but another academically certified teacher. The research is clear that that is a much better way to deliver academics and socialization. By doing this, by combining some of the grade levels into the same classroom, but still staying, into the, uh, staying with the state standards, uh, we are actually um, uh, leaving four classrooms empty, which will now be filled, by the way, with people who are teaching in closets at the Brown, literally. Uh, we have uh, sp uh, speech language, uh, occupational therapy, et cetera. Um, that are teaching in closets that will now have classroom space. So everybody wins. You, I have a better picture, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, my other question was, is that the rent that's proposed, so will that be a, is that a line item now on the school side of the budget, Mr. Mayor? That'll just be absorbed by, within our own budget, so that won't be a line item. For taxes, you mean, or rent? No, the rent. Oh, so I'm sorry. The, the rent will be a school. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. President. I misspoke. The rent will be a line item in the school budget. Yes. Okay. And so, okay. And I also heard uh, a fellow counselor made a comment um, that at the Kylie, you used a, you used ninety thousand dollars as a figure for uh, utilities. Uh, I know maybe. Well, I'm not going to answer, but in my home, we have zones. You, you, you cannot 
you know, shut off a wing and just have, ha you know, a third of the school um, be using utilities and shut down the two thirds if you have no um, occupancy? Yeah, the building doesn't have that capability. It's just, it's just an aged building and it doesn't have that capability. Um, you know. That would be ideal. You're right. You know, I, you know, I guess, and I know, I know it was hard for the school committee, and so obviously, you know, they've made choices to put these line items in for rent, and they've taken away resources, whether it be books, teachers, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I go, you know, I'm going to go back, you know, I, what, 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 what puzzles me or what, what's the, the stress I'm having on a decision is that I, 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 I don't not, I do not think to compare the residential housing market to the commercial market um, is a fair comparison. And so now I look at a building, and I don't know, I know it, was, it hasn't been utilized for many years, three, five years, whatever it is. And so I know a little bit about investments and return on investment. And if he paid 550000 let's say he's gonna put 100000 in to get up to speed. Boy, would I like to be able to get my money back in seven or eight years and have no mortgage. And so, to me, it, it seems like there's something wrong there. You know, I understand about, you know, being able to pay your mortgage and, and have a positive cash flow, but I, I, just, I just have a hard time with, with, with looking what he did. And, and, and I know you put out an RFP and you got one back, and you can interpret that many different ways, and I'm not going to go down that road. Um, you know, but why did we only get one? Is it are we are we being too tight? And I just don't see the the commercial market um, as how does the residential market? And maybe I'm wrong, but I, I I do you know pay attention to these things the best I can. Um, as far as investment, I believe we've made investment in the downtown. Um, so you know, um, I, I look at it, and 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 the, and the last thing I'll I'll close with this is that. The building's been vacant. He bought it. I believe in the lease it says something about 60 days. Both parties can agree to can do it for 60 days. Why can't we wait? Well, let me back up. I, I don't understand. I, don't, I didn't hear the answer about if the building is unoccupied, do we qualify for the MSBA or not? Do we have to keep a few people in there to keep it going? And if we get the grant, do then all of a sudden they, we, we kept them there till July. We got the grant. So now we move them out right away because we have this building and we don't have to worry about that anymore? Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I thought we had to keep it somewhat up and running to be qualified for the, from the MSBA loan. Uh, a Grant. Couple, a couple things, uh, Mr. President. First, uh, and it's been said a couple of times, I want to be very clear. There was nothing cut. There's nothing cut in the school budget because of this agreement. If we didn't go forward with this agreement, we would have to pay 90,000 additional money in utility and energy costs. So there's no program, uh, first of all, there were no programs that were cut. There was no positions, nothing, supplies. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, you haven't, you know, uh, the school budget, there's uh, no cut in school supplies. Nothing was cut because of this. This is a completely budget neutral agreement where we are paying rent instead of paying utilities. It's, it's, it's very clear. Um, as to uh, the issue um, you're asking about um, whether the school has to be operational, um, it's been submitted. We have been up front with the MSBA. They know our plans. They know what we've submitted. Um, when we put forward this proposal, the statement of interest, I had conversations uh, with the MSBA as to what, um, what the building's needs were and what we were looking to do. Uh, so there's nothing surprising on that end. Whether or not they approve us, that's going to be up to them as to what type of programs they want to, to work with. Um, but no, I, do, I am not concerned about um, the school being not utilized as a school. It's not being utilized as a school now. It's, a, it's an office building. It's not, using, it's, not being, it's not a school right now. It's an office building. So you know, I'm not worried about losing the use of a school because it's not a school now. Just, what I, I wasn't... My concern was to be to be considered for an MSBA grant. It has to be. I thought there was something that had to be operational, whether it be for a school or not for a school. It had to be 
operational, inhabited, it couldn't be vacant. I, I could have sworn we did with some of that discussion. Is that, did I, did, did I miss something there? I'm not sure. I'm not aware of that. Okay, so let me ask you a question. If we, if we don't get the grant and we move people out of there, can we ever go back to, for the MSBA for a grant if it's, if it's not, if it's vacant? Do you yes, know the answer we, to that? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, and, and I'll ask you, so I believe in the lease somewhere, is there a reason why we can't, it's, it's May 25th, is there a reason why we can't wait 60 days um, and see if we get the grant or not? I'd like to move forward tonight. Any further councils? Councilor Turco? Mr. President, through you um, to, actually through you to you, um, the continuous use uh, discussed at the second school committee budget meeting, uh, and maybe Dr. Levine would like to clarify, he, he actually stated in that meeting that you were going to keep three or four employees um, at the Kylie building to actually um, keep the continuous use uh, in effect. So it, does that still stand? I, I, there was some, some talk, uh, conversation about continuous use. Through the chair. Uh, there was Councilor Turco, but that did change at the end where uh, the school committee um, voted that uh, nobody would be using that building and everybody would be moving either downtown or to a school. So there will be no continuous use uh, with one exception, and that will be uh, maintenance people will be in and out of that building, uh, as the mayor has said, not only keeping an eye on it, but also uh, doing some of their functions there. Um, by the way, that building is also fully alarmed. Uh, I, I wanted to make sure that you knew that. Um, so as far as the continuous use, the, the most important thing about continuous use as, as a school it deals with um, uh, whether or not, um, I lost my train of thought, whether or not you can, um, you have to, you reach a certain level where you have to make it handicapped accessible. So for example, if, if we did not use this as a school building, and we wanted to renovate, um, you, you would have to meet all ADA standards. Uh, even if you didn't want to, you, you would have to, you would be forced to. Um, if, if it were a continuous use as a school, if you had kids and classrooms in there, and we have periodically, um, and you chose to renovate, then different standards apply. The continuous use for the MSBA is different. The continuous use for the MSBA is once they approve you and they have partnered with you, they want you to begin the process of getting out of that building as soon as possible so that we can get uh, through the process of uh, architect construction and renovation. Um, they want that project, if they fund you, they want that project to move along. So we're not concerned about uh, continuous use re regarding that decision uh, once the decision is made. Thank you very much. That clarifies. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and Council Manning. Thank you. If I could just ask for more clarification on that clarification from Doc, Dr. Levine. Um, so for ADA compliance then, if, if you don't use it as continuous use as a school with instruction and your future plans that we put forward for the SBA is to turn that into a special education learning center of some sort, right? So are we triggering ADA compliance by moving everything out and th then wanting to put students back into it? We, we would, th through the chair, we would trigger ADA compliance no matter what. Once we go into renovation, we, we are fully uh, bound by ADA, today's ADA compliance. This would be if we were to do um, relatively light, I believe the, it's about a 25% of the worth of the building uh, measure. Uh, you could actually do some renovations without a ADA compliance if the building were continually used as a school. Uh, so uh, that we would, no matter what happens, um, w once MSBA uh, approves us, no matter what we use the school as, we have to be fully ADA compliant when we renovate. And so that $15 million assessment then was not focusing on getting that building fully ADA compliant, was yes. it? Yes, I believe it was. 
Uh, I believe that included ADA, uh, ADA upgrades. And not just the SBA um, compliance. Yeah, You're talking AD ADA full compliance. It just came in at $15 million to bring that thing up, that building that's up to? That's my understanding. Okay. I think that's short, but okay. Councilman McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to make a motion, uh, move to allow His Honor the Mayor to execute a lease agreement on behalf of the City of Peabody for the property located at 27 Lowell Street, Peabody. So moved. You've heard the, you've heard the motion. Any discussion on the motion? Council Sinowitz. Thank you, Mr. President. So, Mr. through you to, Mr. to the Mayor. So, if this is clear, it's gonna, uh, you're going to do this. Um, so, if you do not get the loan, you don't get the loan. Is that building going to be torn down and the property sold? Because now you're sitting with a piece of property that you really can't use. You've got a heating system, a utilities is costing you know, 90000 a month. Is that what you said? 90 a year? It was a nine, it would be 90 if the building's fully operational. Yeah. So yeah. what's the, would you, because I know there was talk before about Pilgrim was, not Pilgrim, Rosewood yeah. was interested in it. So we do have an out if, and then we have to look at redistricting and filling up the classes in the, in the West Peabody schools. So I'm, I'm just saying, would that be, if, uh, if it doesn't go through, would that be the MO to, is to sh you're not going to keep running that school with, with, with no intended use for it unless you're going to come back another year and, and apply for another MSBA to the state? Yep, no, good question. And um, what, regardless of, of where we're going to go with the Kylie School, I do think the right decision is to move uh, the administrators out. The question would be, what would be the plans if the MSBA doesn't work out? Uh, I do think there's great value to that property, and there is interest in that property. Uh, I wanted to explore uh, the possibility of keeping it, keeping the building within the system. Um, I know there's pros and cons to selling a school. Uh, we've kept the McCarthy School years ago. There was some t discussion about selling the McCarthy. We decided as a city, and this was long before me, uh, to keep it, and I think that was the correct decision. Um, I think we have to have a real discussion, uh, and certainly the City Council would be involved in that as to the future of, of the school. The decision would be made by the school committee, um, but um, I think that is a strong option. I do think there's significant interest. Uh, when we did explore, and we explored it pretty strongly, um, to try to get a handle on what the market would be, uh, and there is interest. You mentioned one of them. Uh, there were other companies that reached out, um, and that's something that we would definitely have to explore. I, I don't see us holding that building long term. I think we either move forward with the MSBA or we look at that option. Any further discussion on the motion? Being none, we'll call vote. Councilors Manning Martin? No. Gravel? Yes. Turco? Yes. Gould? Yes. McGinn? Yes. Walsh? Yes. Matsoulis? Yes. Charest? Yes. Sinowitz? No. Sasla? No. Motion carries seven to three, one absent. Thank you, Council. Item six, motions, orders, and resolutions. Council Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first off, I just wanted to commend uh, Sharon Cameron of the, the director. She was up here earlier this evening, uh, but she's had a busy day. She was running a substance abuse prevention workshop up at Farm Ave, and uh, there were a lot of participants from uh, all over the spectrum from health service providers. There were folks from Lynn, Salem, and Peabody, and it was a great workshop, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work with this group, um, and what they're doing is uh, trying to fight the opioid epidemic in a more regional, uh, effective way. And uh, so everyone's really getting their heads together and, and um, coming up with some ideas on how we can do that more effectively and work together and improve communication and education uh, on the North Shore here. So I wanted to commend her. She ran a great group. Um, that being said, I'd like to um, I discussed it at subcommittee this evening, the billboard that is out in the Peabody Office Park area. I believe that's in Ward 5. So I think I'd like to make a co-motion with the Ward 5 Councilor, City Council President Saslaw, regarding um, to review by show cause hearing if they've violated their special 
permit by changing it from digital to static without coming before the city council. So I'd like to make that in the form of a motion, a co-motion with Councillor Sasslaw. So moved. For the, you for the motion, any discussion on the motion? Being none, all in favor, any opposed to vote? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Also, um, since 9 Main Street is going up for mortgagee foreclosure auction, um, and it's advertised to go for auction June 1st at 11 a.m., the old O'Shea building on the corner of Main and Foster. Um, I know the, I believe it was purchased for $1 million. 250,000 of that purchase came from the Peabody Community Development Loan. Uh, so I'd like to request of the city solicitor what position we are in to recoup that monies, if we can at all, um, and what action we're taking to recoup that monies of 250,000 loan for uh, CDC, uh, community development loan. So Council, moved. Council Walsh. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, through you to Councilor Manning Martin. I had a discussion earlier today with the mayor. I asked him the same question. My understanding is that we are second in line and that- We're a second mortgagee, so we're out of luck. No. Probably not, based on what they think the building will bring in um, and what is owed on the mortgage. Um, he's fairly confident that we will recoup what has been invested. Okay, well, thank you for that information. I appreciate it. We're on the same page. So I'd like to still move forward with my motion to get um, a decision from the city solicitor what actions we're taking in order and what position we are in as a second mortgagee. Uh, to uh, find out what we're doing to recoup our monies. Thank you. So moved. You just, put, just I have just a quick question. It, in that discussion, uh, Council Walsh, did we? Is it was it appropriate to ask what the first position holder had, what their what their position was? That's what I would think. I, I did not ask, Mr. President. I was more concerned about where we were and what our options were, and, and so I mean I don't want to speak for the mayor. I can only tell you that the conversation I had with him had us as. Uh, in second place, and again, uh, he was fairly confident that we would be able to recoup what has been invested. Thank you. You've heard, you uh, Council Sinowitz. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I don't know what the CDA board is doing. I know they gave a loan to Tipico for $20,000 for a beer and wine license, and when that got flushed and the city lost 20 grand. That, they didn't have any, the license was collateral. So they get their license back, but they're out to 20 grand when they pay for it. So um, the way these loans work is, and I'm sure Council Gravel knows, is that the city gives up to 20% of the loan value. And the uh, property, the, the key to this, you keep your cash position because the, the, the property only, only has to come up with 10% down versus 20% down on a commercial loan. So if I don't know where that $250,000 comes, if that's $250,000 sold for more than a million. And after the sprinkler systems let go a number of years ago after they bought it and they flooded out the whole top floor and rotted everything out, I would say we could be in a in not in an advantageous position to get our money back once it sells because that building I would think would fall in value um, because there's more renovations to do. So. Uh, I don't know why um, the, the uh, whoever bought it um, went belly up. I don't know the re reason for it, but I think uh, there has to be more accountability for these loans that we're giving out. It all sounds great. Whoa, the development, I'm buying this, I'm buying that. Did the guy across the street at 27 we just leased it out to, did he take a loan for that building from the city? Interesting thought. So, that, you know, I hear what you're saying, but... Um, I don't want to. I don't want the city put in any more positions where we're losing. We're getting bad debt. That's not. That's not what we do. And I think that maybe they should be more stringent, and see what his business plan was. I never saw it. I never knew what it was. We don't have a say on, on who approves those loans. So, that's this. This the comment. You've heard the motion by Councilman Ann Manning Martin. Any uh, all in favor? Any opposed? To vote. Thank you. Nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Council Gravel. Thank you. Uh, no motions. But uh, I will say that it was uh, the reason why that building was in a, uh, we're in a second position was that 
front money was used for the down payment to, as exactly as you described it. So. Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, move to receive under the suspension of the rules item 8B. For the motion, I'll favor and oppose the vote. And uh, Mr. President, move to receive. I'm not sure if this is item 9L or 9A. It's, it's labeled 9L on the uh, agenda and 9A on the piece. Uh, Would that be the block party? The block party. Move to receive and approve all papers being in order. For the motion, I'll favor and oppose the vote. And, uh, Mr. President, move to have public services repair a uh, sidewalk at 3 Gemma Drive. You've heard the motion. All in favor and oppose the vote. And lastly, for uh, the public's knowledge and the benefit of the council, um, Attorney Kelty has called a public meeting at, um, excuse me, a neighborhood meeting, I should say, at um, Stonewood Tavern on uh, Wednesday, June 6th at 6 p.m. regarding a construction um, of 22 homes. Uh, at, at, the, at the top of uh, Ralph Road, where, where uh, it meets Pearl Road, Road, over to Innes and off of Bartholomew Street, if that makes sense to anybody. But anyway, it's 22 homes, Wednesday, June 6, 6 p.m., for those that are interested. Thank you. All set. Thank you, Council Turco. Thank you. Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, through you to Tim. Tim, can we confirm that uh, we're meeting on the um, in the fi finance committee about the assessor's means of? Can you give me a date on that, Tim, please? I haven't spoken to the chairman yet. Okay, but. he just shook his head. Yes. We have a regular meeting on June 8th. Can we put geez, it in there? Geez, Tim, you asked me while I was sitting there. Yeah, that is day, true. I, I said did yes. It's been a long night. June 8th? June 8th. Thank you, Dave. Like Thank you, Tim. For the motion. Council begin. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think, as Councilor Turco pointed out, there's some uh, issues with the agenda here in terms of how it's numbered. So my reference is going to be to how the item itself is marked because I think the agenda is wrong. Uh, so under suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8F. And when you just say, can you just say item 8F and just the first two term, you know? What, item 8F, which is on the agenda, is item 8G. Item 8F, uh, excuse me, so which is the Peterbilt, Peterbilt, yep. go right ahead. Yeah, uh, so move to receive item 8F and schedule a public hearing, so move. For the motion, all in favor, oppose the vote. Thank you, Mr. President. And under suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8H. And for clarifications, that's on the agenda is item 8I. Uh, and take up the matter at the same meeting at which the hearing for item 8F is scheduled. So moved. You heard the motion, all in favor, oppose the vote. No further motions. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Walsh. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, in the same line of Councillor Gould, I was wondering if um, we could schedule with the Finance Committee the issue of um, Peabody's insurance policies. Uh, I had brought that up last year, and I think earlier this year, I would like to have, we referred it to finance, and would like to have a discussion on what our coverages are on our municipal buildings, parks, and what our indemnity is. So. If we could refer that to finance, I would appreciate it. For the motion, all in favor, oppose the vote. Council Walsh, did you receive item 88E, which is starts off as State Rep. Tom Walsh, Thomas Walsh? I, I'd be happy to. What a, it was really a terrific piece of information. But I, I would receive that, Mr. President, and uh, refer that to the Legal Affairs Committee. Thank you, Council Walsh. Councilman Sewell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to make a motion to have the electric light plant and public works go over to uh, Mount Vernon Street uh, on the uh, cemetery side. Mount Vernon Street is a, is a steep hill and it's uh, one side of 
residential, the other side is a cemetery, and it goes on a hill. And let me make my motion, and then I will explain why, why I'm making it. Uh, to have public works and the electric light plant send a representative over there to, to check out the wires and the trees uh, to see that, uh, to come up with their opinion on, on what should be done over there. Uh, the reason for my motion, Mr. Chairman, a year ago I got a call uh, that uh, on the hill uh, of Mount Vernon Street they were filling it in. And uh, I went over and I spoke with the uh, people at Harmony Grove and they said they, were, they would stop. And they started uh, doing whatever it is they're doing again and I got a call. So I drove over again and they were, they were, they had a backhoe and they were, um, I don't know if they were digging or filling, you couldn't really tell. But they were so close to the fence that the trees were moving. You know, they were hitting the trees and the residents next door were afraid that uh, the trees would knock the wires down and cause a danger to the neighborhood. So. If you send a representative over there, you know, that's what I'm asking for. And let the city go over and, and, uh, and work this out as opposed to myself going over and working this out. I'd rather have them who have the authority as opposed to myself going over and telling them to, uh, you know, to stop digging. But that's my motion, Mr. Chairman. So move. Put the motion on the floor. All in favor, any opposed, a vote. Okay, uh, and also, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ma Vernon Street, uh, I've gotten requests be, uh, because they've been dumping on that street on the cemetery side. And uh, they've been doing that for a while, and whatever we do to put signs up, they ignore it. And one of the residents asked me today if uh, I would make a motion to put a no dumping sign and find out what the fine is if anyone's dumping and post that figure up there. If it's no dumping, a $300 fine, post that figure up. It may stop them from doing that. Okay. You've and heard the motion, all in favor and opposed the vote. And also, Mr. Chairman, for the people on Mount Vernon Street, they were supposed to have their street hot off last year and we uh, put it off for uh, for reasons uh, that I can't remember, but anyways, we put we put it off. The mayor told me today that uh, uh, he's going to be sending letters out to Mount Vernon Street, and they're going to be getting uh, new water lines and a new street. So, anyone on Mount Vernon Street that's been looking, you know, hopefully we'll get it this year. So, we'll, thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. you for that information, Council Chair. Thank you. I'd like to, uh, on the suspension of rules, accept 8J. Heard the motion. All in favor, oppose the vote. And I would like to make a co motion with Councilor Sasslaw to repair and or remove it now, repair the guardrail that's on Forest and Lowell Street and ask if we have any records of who might have did that damage and submit the insurance claim to them. Uh, I know. People have been walking by and it's been hanging and, and I, I'm sure you got the same calls. So if you don't mind, no disrespect for making the call motion. In, in Council, was the motion to, um, not the insurance piece, but the, to repair the adjustment, to repair yeah. it also? Well, we, we know that guardrail is needed, but it's hanging and sticking out. So if they need to remove it and repair it as soon as possible, because it certainly is needed. And to find out if uh, what vehicle might have hit it to submit the, um, the claim to that insurance. So move. Thank you. You've heard the motion. All in favor, oppose the vote. Council, uh, excuse me, Council Sinowitz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I know that our uh, Department of Public Works is understaffed, and uh, I know it takes some time to get things done, and I always tell residents to be patient. But lately, nothing seems to be getting done. I make motions, they go into limbo. I have residents call about a plow that ripped up the grass. He sent an email in March. 
No response. He just sent another one. The response from the DPW was, um, oh yeah, we got it out of the work order, but I can't tell you when it's going to be done. What kind of a response is that to a resident? And I'm getting a little frustrated with it. I've got three items that have not, I have, can't get any answer. So I'm going to make the, one final motion. And if they, it's not going to respond, then I'm going to call the head of the DPW in here and find out what's going on. I don't know. Is he so understaffed? You can't get anything done? I don't know. So number one, what's the status of the repair at Lake and Lindauer? Number two, what's the status of the repair at 20 Samoset? And what's the status of the repair of the, of the grass that's been torn up since the winter on Manomet Drive? So moved. You heard the motion. All in favor and oppose the vote. Thank you. Thank you, Council. So um, could someone, I need a motion. I don't believe we did uh, receive item 8C. I'm going to go, I'm going to go what's on the agenda, 8C, um, completed council motions. Motion to receive. You heard the motion. All in favor. Thank you. Uh, oppose the vote. Um, motion to receive item 8D from someone. Motion to receive, Mr. President. Motion to receive item 8D. All in favor, oppose the vote. Um, we, I need someone to um, receive item 8F and schedule public hearing. So moved. Read the motion. All in favor, oppose the vote. And uh, someone uh, receive item 8H. All papers being in order. Please. 8H. Motion to receive item 8H and approve all papers being in order. Thank you. And um, uh, lastly, item 8K, PBD Veterans Council Memorial, Memorial Day Parade off, off, excuse me, orders. Motion to receive. Council Walsh. Um, I just have um, one uh, motion. My motion is uh, to the Water Department through the DPS um, to please go out and repair the dip on 614, 616 Lowell Street. Um, I believe the Water Department hired a subcontractor. That subcontractor needs to go back out there and fix it uh, to alleviate the uh, noise um, that is coming from large trucks from Big Y, from the Crystal Lake um, situation. So I still don't believe that's been repaired also. I'd like to make that motion. Um, Refer the motion. All in favor, oppose the vote. Uh, item 9M, Council Gavell. Uh, taxi cab, limousine, driver's license for Scott Middleton, license number three, move to receive and approve, subject to all papers being in order. Refer the motion. All in favor, oppose the vote. 10, uh, 10 and uh, ready for council adoption, ordinance amendment, section 1981, parking pro prohibited handicap zone. The Coda City of Peabody, 16 Swampskid Avenue, move to adopt as advertised. With the motion, all in favor, oppose the vote. Ready for council adoption and an ordinance amending Chapter 19, Motor Vehicles and Traffic of the Coda City of Peabody, uh, move to receive it and adopt as advertised. Heard the motion, all in favor, and oppose the vote. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Is that a roll call? Call? Is that the parking? Par I'm sorry, the, the parking the... changes downtown? Uh, no? No, that's. These are, these are Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Council.